And we're back! Wow. Episode 8! Even though it says episode 7 in the corner, that's just because I don't know how to fucking count. I am joined with my co-host, Brian Kern. What is up, everybody? How are you all doing? They can't respond to you because they can only type to you. And our chat. guest, Casey Sable. What's going what on, homie? What up? It's awesome to we, be here, y'all. Sweet. I am stoked to have you. We're going to talk some metal. We might even talk some gent, maybe some production <laughs> shit. But first, we need to get into the news of 6 9 Sadly, it is a slow Takashi 6 9 alert today. He was unable to drop his new song. Um, we don't really know why. He did apologize and said the music video is coming next week. Um, I'm sure you're really upset over that, Casey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quite upset, yeah. I actually, yeah, it's funny. I, I like, didn't even know who that was until you texted me the other day. This is like a whole video I'll do. <laughs> legit, legitimate. That is legit. It's, it's sure, a thing I, we I feel do. Like I should probably be embarrassed, though. <laughs> no, please don't. Please don't. In fact, I hated him for a good second. And the only reason that I'm buying into it is he has this investigative personality that he's going all in on. And I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. And I'm really bummed. I am bummed because it's like his latest track. It just hits a certain way. And he's he's all the hype right now. And really, it's just he's playing everybody and it's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's a beautiful display. He's the biggest troll in the game. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, he's he's a huge troll. Everything he does is to fuck with you. Uh, his music is just calling people out. He loves to snitch on people. It's it's funny as shit, to be honest with you. And he has amazing rainbow hair that I need to do my hair like. And then I'll be more yeah, famous I saw on few, TikTok. I saw a few pictures. He seems like quite the provocateur. <laughs> We yeah. won't even get into his criminal past, but uh, I was gonna say, Casey, you have probably the hair for it if you ever want to go that route. You know, bleach it up, put some color in it, have it match maybe the tone of a music video. I think it would work, my man. I don't know. Oh. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not at 35 years old. Uh, hey, dude, <laughs> never too late. Never too late to, to dabble, dude. Come on. Just do what yeah. I do and tell all the chicks you're 25. It's fine. It's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so slow news day. Um. There's a whole not a lot going on in the music world unless you're just downloading new CDs like we are. Uh, there's a Lady Gaga CD out that I didn't pay much attention to. Nor there I. is a sick new Bleed From Within <laughs> CD that I enjoyed. That was pretty fire. And there's a shit ton of new singles. Have you guys yeah. heard any of the new metal singles that came out today? I have. I'm actually curious as to which ones are piquing your interest because I have a couple and they all kind of fall in the line of super hate hateful, super aggressive. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested too because I yeah I've been remiss. I haven't really been looking at the the new uh, releases today. I think I'm into way different music than you guys are though. <laughs> <laughs> I think Casey's gonna be into the more talented metal where we're gonna bring out like the gimmicky shit that he's gonna be like, oh yeah that. I you know, don't like, know. When he... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> It's going to be like when you're at Thanksgiving dinner with your family and then there's that one aunt who brings the green bean casserole and you don't really want to eat it, but you got to kind of act like you like it. It's going to be something like that. Um, Attila. Uh, Attila dropped a new single called Cancelled. Oh yeah. I believe it's about cancel culture. It is super vicious. I haven't liked a whole lot of Attila singles in the past. Uh, they're mostly a party band and hearing this song was sweet as fuck because they finally strayed away from the party sound. It's just heavy and to the point. It's like the first single I've heard from them that actually had substance. Uh, did you guys like it? Wow. Yeah, yeah I did. Aren't they kind of breakdown-y kind of thing? Usually like party breakdowns? A lot of breakdowns. breakdowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of breakdowns. Yeah. They are. Your, your classic uh, metalcore with a little bit of probably like, I would say now, uh, uh, like a new metal, probably more new metal influence than anything now, just because they have always kind of leaned on Franz doing the, the growly rap. That's what he's known for. He's known for rapping really, really fast, but with a growl that adds to the intensity of the songs. Oh, yeah, it's okay. actually really good. He's really good at it, and it's you know not everybody can do that, especially do that in an entertaining and effective way like he has, and he's been able to kind of catapult his own like career, his own image himself off of that. Uh, so I'm a huge Attila fan. I, the guys in the band are awesome. Closer. Yeah, you know, and they're they're <laughs> they're uh, they're 
if anything, I think leading that new metal cusp right now, and that's what people are into, and they come every time they release an album, they come with something new. Uh, they're into a lot of effects with this song. They are going a whole new metal route as far as that like screechy guitar amplification that they throw in there. Uh, he's back to rapping really, really fast again, so I think it's just another aggressive style of Attila. They're just going to keep progressing towards that route. I think, honestly, it's probably the best single drop for today. We had a couple. We had Fit for a King and We Came as Romans uh, collab that they did. Uh, there was also another other Lamb of God single that dropped, which I think kind of flew under the radar. So for metal drops, I think Attila probably had the best. Mm. There was I also enjoyed... a mirror track. I don't know if anybody's into that. <laughs> Casey, uh, are you one of those guys who do not like breakdowns? Uh, it's funny. I had about like 15 minutes of my life where I had first heard them and thought they were fucking, you know, like really cool. It's funny you mentioned a mirror though, because I actually produced vocals on one of their, uh, I think it was called like it was either speaker of the dead or like or the record before or after it was the weirdest experience because um the the at the time they were on sumerian records i, I don't know if they still are and they were on victory and sharp tone right now well they've yeah they've they've actually never been on sumerian but they were managed by sean keith from sumerian okay for a long time. okay then that's yeah, yeah then that's what it was because uh, ash uh, ash avildsen and sean hit me up it was like around the time that I had just uh, left Periphery and people were kind of, you know, passing my name around as a vocal producer and okay. and they hit Very me cool. up to they hit me up to produce the vocals for one of their records. Do you and, think it uh, was Slave to the Game? Or I'd have Speaker to hear, of the Dead. I think it was Speaker that I'd have to hear the songs cuz the funny thing that I was going to say about it was that uh, when they came in to record the vocals, I think his name was Frankie, the vocalist. Frankie Paul Mary? Yeah, Frankie <laughs> yeah. Paul Mary. Yeah, he was he was a great guy, super nice and really really fucking good as a vocalist and really good at recording. The weirdest part about it was that he I don't think he actually wrote any of the lyrics before. Like I think he freestyled the lyrics. And Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, and Sean yeah, and Sean, Sean and Ash were there the whole time kind of directing it and like just really psyched and they were really nice and it was a cool experience, but it was it was one of the first records I produced vocals on because I did it in my uh, studio apartment at the time in uh, Sherman, I think it was Sherman Oaks, uh, about, you know, like 20, 15 minutes away from here. And yeah, he just like, man, he just like freestyled the vocals mostly and it turned out really good. And I think they might have retracked some of it later on, but um, I'm pretty sure a lot of what I did uh, production wise was uh, was kept. And I'm I don't know if I was credited for it, but I I'm, <laughs> uh -huh. I don't. I'm not lying. I promise it happens. So I'm actually I'm I'm going through the discography <laughs> right now. I'm doing I'm doing some research, some production research here. Yeah, uh, yeah, it might be on all music. I think I was credited as vocal engineer or something. So was it Eternal Enemies? That came out after Speaker of the Dead. But he said Dude, the, you're the, talking the song, around like 08, 09, right? Uh, it would have been it would have been at least 09 uh, because oh, okay. that was when I moved so to then LA. So Felony, Felony was the album that came out in 09. But it yeah, might have been after. Right. No, no, but but it was but I moved here in '09, and I didn't. I don't think I did those vocals until 2009 or 2010. So probably, probably would have Speaker been the of the Dead. After. Yeah, it was yeah. probably Speaker of the Dead then. Yeah, that's okay. fucking sick. That's so so did bad. did Frankie come into the studio and pen and pad it, or did he literally go into the vocal booth like Jay Z and just freestyle off his top of his head? I think it was a combination. Uh, again, like whatever work was done before they got to my place, I I can't say, but. Uh, Ash and Sean were kind of assuming uh, the producer role in that, and they just—I feel like they just kind of wanted me to get the get the tracks down and edited and stuff. And um, so yeah, I think he might have written some of it before, but it, the the vibe in the room was like, Ash was like, "No, do this differently. Wait, how about this here? Uh, switch this and that." And so it kind of really felt like it was more of a freestyle kind of kind of situation, but. Um, I've never seen anything like that before, and maybe that's because I've never <laughs> I've never worked in hip hop, and I know that that's more of a thing that's prevalent in hip hop. Definitely. I'm not surprised. I, I don't know anything about that. That that, who, that Frankie would or yeah yeah I mean he's just that kind of character. I mean he's he's an amazing vocalist in terms of how his mentality is right. He's he's fronted several different bands and he's always kind of working on these creative projects and just going down all these routes. So I'm not yeah. surprised that he has some unique way of approaching what he does studio wise, writing wise. Right, he just kind of comes in, probably pulls out of a basket. It's, it's in yeah, the formulation, yeah. in how he formulates it is probably where it really shines, right? Like when he decides to emphasize a certain oomph or something, you know? 
Yeah, it's 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 an unusual approach, especially in that genre, because uh, in metal, whether it's fucking, I mean, especially in like more breakdowny, rhythmic, kind of groove oriented stuff, it's like the vocals really have to have to fit into that that uh, sonic and rhythmic jigsaw puzzle, you know. And and a lot of the times, the best results come from uh, com- uh, composed performances, where you know you really. Pain, just painstakingly compose everything before you go in and uh, it didn't feel like it was that was the way that was done but it turned out great and his delivery was great he was really professional and really nice and those are all those dudes are really uh, uh, Ash and Sean were like the first industry people I ever I ever met because Periphery was the first real band I was ever in and uh it was cool to to have that experience with them, you know. They, they that kind just of like friends. That kind of explains how Amir was able to see so much growth and success while on a a, a prison like label like Victory, because you had guys from the other label from Sumerian like Ash and Sean that really headed up a lot of their their activities. Uh, I remember putting in countless Amir interview requests back in like the same time frame you're talking about, and they all went to Sean Keith from Sumerian at the time who is now like a major dude at sharp tone and that's where like attila and a bunch of these bands are dropping records now so he's mm-hmm. still in the game doing big shit yeah dude uh i i haven't kept in touch with them uh but but ash is a fucking renaissance man dude he he has a piece in i mean he did a movie he was like managing some gigantic fucking wrestler for a while he he loves what he does he's a really nice guy i love his uh He's like, he's really into conspiracy theories and shit. He posts about it on Facebook no, all the time. No. I don't know if he does anymore, but uh, no, he's he's a lot of fun. He's a really passionate dude. He's really talented on many fronts. I, I haven't talked to him in years, but uh, but I ain't got anything but good uh, good stuff to say about him. Good I've always been a fan of that record label because there's yeah. been certain periods where they've housed all my favorite metal bands. And yeah, yeah. I don't know if this is true, but someone told me that Ash got into the the movie world because his father directed one of the Karate Kid movies. Do you know uh, anything about that? No, I don't. I don't. That's, See, that's this possible. is something I, I have never got confirmed. Like, apparently his dad, like, did one of those movies. And, like, you know, a lot of people don't keep the same last names. And so, like, it's hard to keep yeah. up with shit. I don't know if it's true. It's just some random shit I heard on tour. <laughs> that, that that would be wild, man. I mean, I, I relate to that too because for a while I was trying to drop my last name because of my because uh, who my dad was, but eventually I changed my mind. But it may I, I don't know with him maybe yeah. That, dude, I want to know now. But one things one things for sure though, he never said that if it is true, which is kind of like that's kind of how the like the way that people like that role. It's like if you're trying to do your own thing and you're really talented in your own right. For example, I would never, I never bring up my dad. It's weird that I'm saying I never bring up my dad. That's but why like, I didn't know. I had to ask yeah. you. So I was like, this, this doesn't seem. That's too easy. The same last name. No way. Yeah, yeah, no. I, us, I usually wouldn't. And the only reason I am is because you mentioned it on text. But yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. I want to know. He never mentioned it to me. And dude, me and Dra- uh, me and Ash hung out a lot. I think that would be a brag if, like, your dad did the Karate Kid movie, so maybe that's why, like, I know a lot of people that are what I call Hollywood, involved in the music industry, the entertainment industry. If you talk a lot about what you do or what you're going to do, you're usually full of shit. The people that are doing, yeah. the really doing things, they're not necessarily talking about it. Like, yeah. every time I meet, like, a really talented musician, they tend to listen to music that's not in their genre and they're always talking about records that i'd like what i wouldn't think you'd listen to that huh yeah it's always yeah. strange yeah did you say that yeah. he managed a professional wrestler for some time yeah dude some fucking uh like i don't i don't know anything about that industry but it was like one of those wwe or wwf oh i think it was i think i think it was named uh, the wrestler's name was uh, like the warrior it's something? ultimate warrior that's ultimate what it was warrior. okay yeah it was before heard, the warrior died yeah i heard i heard i heard wow. that he was i heard that he was doing that and i think it's true that that's, that's, that's why asking did that big workout video with ultimate warrior back in the day because mm. i think ash they did yeah th- he was involved in like two bands on sumerian did it i know asking was one I don't know if it was Boo or Icy Stars that did the other, like, boot camp with the Warrior, but 
Ash got involved with with the warrior like right towards the end of his life. So like by the time he died, they were like doing Throwback Thursday, and it was those videos with asking. It was like, oh man, like wow, sucks we had to lose that guy. That's wild. We're huge wrestling fans, so it's funny because literally every episode, <laughs> wrestling finds us somehow. It's super crazy. We never bring it up as a topic or really discuss it, but it's always brought up or involved in some weird so, way. So. Dude, that, it's such a funny industry that I never I never got into, but every time I see clips, I'm like, yeah, I see why people could really, could really oh, love deep. this shit. We're deep. Half that wall in Matt's background is wrestling stuff. Like, it's, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and then funny. the Ben Law the- t-shirt. The interesting thing that I find about wrestling, if you're like an outside fan, is like if you were to be an author or in in Hollywood in the entertainment industry, if you're making a movie, wrestling is storytelling 101 at its most basic form. You have two people, there's a discrepancy, and they fight it out. You know, every wrestling match you see on TV is supposed to be a wrestling match where a fight broke out. That's why they do all this shit that's not really in, like, amateur wrestling and stuff. <coughs> Crawling yeah. up the turnbuckle, jumping off it, hitting each other with chairs. Yeah. Um, it's, it's always interesting in that aspect. It's, it's kind of funny. Um, what are the other metal tracks that we've jammed this week? Because I went through a bunch. Uh, you mentioned We Car and Fit for a King. They announced that they were going to do a split EP, 7-inch of sorts. And it got me excited because I figured that would be really cool. When I listened to Carry the Weight, my excitement immediately died. Uh, no. I did oh, no. not like that song. I, uh, they had me invested for like maybe 20 seconds. When the clean singing came on, I clocked out. You're over it, huh? It mm. killed me. It's, mm. What it's is that, it? Why? No. It's, it's no. that kind of... Uh, <laughs> now, I'm not going to say Fit for a King's doing like incredibly like high octaves and crazy clean singing it's pretty similar to that but when you're doing that hardcore type singing or more gang vocal status where you're kind of yelling melodically um there's some ways it works in some ways it doesn't this did nothing for me um they probably were i mean i think they want to keep clean singing in their style but they could have gone without that and i would have enjoyed the record more um Uh they could have done a lot better because like they're kind of switching vocalists on on a few songs and that what, one did nothing for me. What is that kind of your? Is that your just like your kind of thing where you like when when you don't like when heavy bands incorporate lots of? And by the way, sorry, I just have a huge like clean singing, <laughs> like it's so, such a it's such a hilarious mm, thing to me. Mm. And it's not just a, it's not just because I'm the singer. I always give I always troll my friends who are like one of my best friends. Mike is uh, this elitist black metal guy. We and, love elitists. <laughs> dude, yeah, he's yeah. He's no he's he's to the extent like he's the true like the true like TR like V or whatever it is where where they like the the music is regarded as illegitimate if the production is good. You okay, know? I know it's exactly not real, what you're talking about. It's not about. true black metal if the production is good. And, it's too and, nice. It yeah, sounds too good. No, I mean I get that it's part of like the uh, the cultural aesthetic from which that music uh comes and I, I get that but w- it's funny to me whenever I hear people who like metalcore or metal or, or hardcore and a band that they like or are listening to throws in singing in with the the vocals like the more like uh, let's call them screams or growls or other forms of vocal unclean and they vocals. call it and they call it yeah Dirty vocals it's like unclean and clean is like this dichotomy but to me it's just like clean singing is so you just mean fucking singing. You just mean singing. <laughs> yeah, but to me, because they're not singing in like the normal sense, it's more of like a blah, 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 blah. You know, it's clean it's like a singing. Harmony. It's like oh, it's oh, a maybe, okay, then maybe I'm okay, maybe I need to hear it is what you're talking about. Because when I think of it, I think of people referring to bands like Kill Switch. Yes, like, they are. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, it's definitely. like it's like the cleans and the screams and the yeah. gutturals and like. Imagine if yeah, they like, were trying I just, to I be just Kill hate Switch. When they call it cleans. Imagine they're trying to be Kill Switch, but they didn't execute the singing as good as Howard. It's like that. Oh, so you're just saying you didn't like you didn't like the cleans? Yeah, the cleans, the um, the singing <laughs> portions that they do. No, I love yeah. that you asked that question and brought up Elitist because there we there's have a, a, we have an elite, we have a purist here is what we got because he's 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 digging. <laughs> I like it. 
I like There's it. a it whole means. discussion to be had on that because you brought yeah, up please. if I don't like bands that do um, singing. I, I don't care what the band does as long as the shit sounds good. Like, I, I, when I go True. to rap music, I don't need them to be extra lyrical all the time. It could be yeah. stupid nonsense as long as it sounds cool. I'm into it. So, yeah. like, when it comes to metal bands, it, it would be weird to hear singing in, like, a really nasty band. Like, if Black Dahlia Murder had clean singing, it oh, would yeah, sound yeah, really yeah. strange. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, yeah. And in some other bands, I think it's it's perfect. If you can bust it out and do it melodically, go for it. Um, it's a hard blend to do. I, I think, like, you're either going to do all singing, like, um, we just listened to I'm Abomination a few weeks ago. They shred, uh -huh. but it's singing all over the whole thing. And then there's bands like Suicide Silence, which I used to love back in the day, that never has any clean singing. That's always yeah. screaming brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, for their for their riffs and their production, their music, that fucking that would sound absurd. It'd be ridiculous. The whole point of singing the chorus is that the instrumentation is arranged is arranged so that singing actually makes sense. For Black Dahlia Murder, there's, I mean, to my knowledge, there's no parts of their music that would accommodate singing. They haven't you know, changed in 15 it, years. You haven't missed it. Unless yeah. you were going for like a super, ah, like fucking just like some <laughs> sort of like, what are they, like planet, whatever, the fucking Silent frosted planet? planet. No, frosted oh, planet or whatever. That's stupid. <laughs> they're just like, it's they're, all no, super. But they're, they're, they're like, they're bands who really pull off the whole like really dark, evil, blast beat, like fast wrist yes. thing. But then there's singing. I'm trying to think of who an example of one is. Uh, like it's all cleans, uh, but it's super heavy. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm but it's like, but like, but like death metal way. heavy and like black metal. Veil vale of heavy. Maya. They're not all cleans. Mm, yeah, but 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 Veil. Vale, vale, but when Veil vale have singing, it's like, it sounds like periphery or like, you know, like really kind. Well, not like periphery, but just it. It's melodic. It's a melodic part. It really makes sense to have singing. They there. fall in. They fall into similar categories. Between just, the Buried and Me kind of does like a singing yeah, while they yeah. get soup, but they're weird. They're just all over the place, super groovy, super doomy, but they do singing over a lot of it, over a Dude, lot yeah. of it. Yeah, they they had a they were one of my favorite bands when I, I yeah, was still they're in phenomenal. Boston. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me at all. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Great, 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 phenomenal presence live, uh, and it's just like the record, man. Their instrumentation is beautiful. Yeah. They're just so clean. They're really fucking smart musicians. I believe most of them like yeah. went to college and graduated and shit. <laughs> Dude, the, usually the, the funny thing is most of the best musicians I know didn't go to college for it or dropped out of college. And they they, they kind of like learn music it. theory on their own, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, or, or I mean, honestly. A lot of the best musicians I know don't know a lick of theory. Uh, they just have great. They just have a great ear for it. Uh, my my friend Misha from Periphery was that way for a long time. Uh, he just had an incredible ear for complex music and really challenging harmony and stuff. But he didn't know he didn't know what he was doing. But he was just creating really uh, really advanced music that, like any music professor in my because I went to Berkeley, any music professor would have fucking had a field day with in class dudes Just, like misha and anup sastry fucking blow my mind multi-instrumentalists that like yeah i don't know how these guys always gravitate towards that gent sound but they always end up in these like crazy bands like that or um i know anup's done shit with like uh polyphia and stuff like always really crazy smart guitar work from those guys yeah it's really hard it's very challenging music uh it's it's true. I mean, a lot of the time, the reason for that, I think, is because in order to... The, the gent sound, it's kind of... Uh, uh, the sound of it kind of facilitated this whole culture of bedroom producers. Uh, yep. pe people who didn't have anyone around them who, w with whom they could relate on, on the genre that they really liked a lot. And so they, they kind of had to figure out how to do everything themselves. And we're lucky enough to be able to afford a drum kit and a guitar, you know? And then, like, once you get good enough at that, you want to be able to write songs. And once you get good enough at writing songs, you have to... Uh, the next step is, well, how do I record them so that I can, I can, you know, people can hear them. I live in the middle of nowhere. There's no scene for this music in any, like, outside of... Uh, well, really, the scene, like, with Jen, it was, like... It was, like, Maryland and, like, the random city is very few musicians dispersed throughout the country who had to connect through the internet. And then there was this huge audience for it in like the UK. So yeah. everyone just kind of had to figure out how to get good at their craft and, and really wield technology in a way that, that uh, you know, they could, they could reach out to everyone else. And there was just no, like there's, 
like I understand it because that's the kind of the position I was in. I had to learn how to do everything myself too because I I was from a, a city where there were there was no one else interested in doing what I wanted to do, and so I was like, well, shit, how do I make a song without knowing any? Well, okay, well, I just have to figure out how to do everything myself. Uh, we actually have a few bedroom producers in the chat, so that's super <laughs> cool. Um, Brett Larson says he's guilty as charged. I know Vinny Esmeralda is a bedroom serenader and bedroom producer. Um, do you get annoyed at the term gent? Because I know a lot of bands that kids on the internet would say, oh, yeah, that's gent. They're gent core. I like that gent stuff. They all get mad when they're called that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's... Uh, honestly, like, uh, my opinion on it is that it's a it's a legitimate subgenre that I mean whether or not it's reducible to the automatopoeia that it's derived from you you know you know what I mean like the gent yeah that's a type of sound. pizza right yeah right yeah yeah <laughs> no it's the, it's it's the automatopoeia for the actual sound of the guitar right it's that, gen, that gen, 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 yeah exactly yeah they're the yeah like what's his name calls it Jun but it's like gent or Jun or whatever but no it's dude it's a it's an actual subgenre that is a phenomena and continues to grow. And I, I think people who who have capitalized on that trend should be proud of it. I mean, it's definitely a, the first time in music history that a particular texture of an instrument that's featured in that music defines the label of the genre. It's never happened before. It, and, and it kind of explains why the majority of the fan base of these bands are, it's, the genre has spawned like this whole culture of bedroom pr like these people would never have been musicians if it weren't for the fact that they saw Misha with like a laptop and a and a and one piece of gear like making this shit that sounded fucking sick and the and it, because it's called jet it attracts people who are just trying like mostly who are trying to do trying to make that sound you know it's like jet it's like a fucking sound it's not just a genre. It's not just like metal or like R and B, which doesn't really say anything. These are they're, they're vague terms. Gent is like a really specific textural reference to the. And production. it's not gimmicky. It's, it's literally if you no, like that yeah. sound, you like the music. And if you don't have it, you're yeah. not gent. It's not like you can argue what's yeah. metal and what's not. If you don't have it, you're not gent. Like you can't. It, you play. know, it's 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 funny. It's funny though. Like I, I've actually been finding recently, uh, honestly, uh, like because because I was in periphery for like a not very long and the people that liked me in that band followed me when I left and they all for the most part like uh, you know pop rock and, and country and anything that has electric guitar in it um, that just kind of pushes the boundaries a little a little or is like a little innovative in terms of harmony something something virtuosic has to be happening in the production or the performances of the musicians and they like it I mean they're really they're, they're, the, the, the tastes that I find amongst the fan base in Gent are really diversified. Honestly, I mean, like my, the song that I just came out with is like doing really well in Gent forums. And it is not Gent, not even remotely. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, I can totally understand that. Like the Gent kids are going to follow you, but your song doesn't specifically fall into that category. Not, not like, even I a little bit. I didn't hear the Gent, 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 Gent at all. No, no, it never happens. I, like I can tell you, it, it doesn't happen in that song. And, Purposefully, and, but, not but, Gent. <laughs> it's just no. It's just like that's yeah. I don't know. Like I didn't. I I, uh, I didn't. I was never influenced by hardcore. Uh, growing up, I was always like into power metal and eighties eighties hair metal, and country music and. <laughs> And uh, like some and symphonic music and stuff. So like that gent sound was something that like I never, I never, uh, I never, it never attracted me enough to feature it so much as a texture in a song I would write. You know, I was never just like writing riffs. It was just like, like fucking like that on my like. It's never. It was never something that that was how I wanted to express myself. But I really fucking loved what Misha was doing, and when I heard it and was like, hey, let me sing over this. And he was like, all right, cool, let's try it, you know? And I don't know what it is, but, like, maybe maybe it's because we, like, were maybe one of the first bands to do, like, the Gent sound with the singing on top of it that it inspired Gent fans to like music that features singing instead of has it as, 
you know, like a gimmick in the chorus. I don't know, but... I the, feel like after Periphery, it became more prominent to have more clean singing than screaming in gent type of songs. Like, there's plenty of bands that do the gent, and they do a lot of breakdowns, and they're all screaming. Those bands typically don't last very long either, but the ones that sing, you see them put out like five, six, seven albums. I actually am not too much of an over... Like, I don't like the gent that's mostly cleans, to be honest. I do like the more impressive what are you trying to say, bro? to gent. Um, yeah. Just because I feel like it does add to the <laughs> sound of gent. I do feel like it adds to that chugginess, that deep, gr just grimy sound that it has. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love cleans when they're done right, but if I'm ever listening to a new band and they immediately go into, like, that vibrato singing over the gent chugs, I'm just like, man... Give me something different, because now I feel it's overplayed, you know? And Dude, you uh, definitely introduced that on a standard where, like, people had to replicate it or they felt like they weren't making gent, right? You set a standard, probably. Oh, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I mean... Uh, no, you did, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, per, yeah. And he, he, the little bit that you're in periphery <laughs> definitely did some shit. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's, I mean, it's really flattering, honestly. But uh, it's. I, I think... Here's, here's my dumbass opinion, honestly. I think that... Like I, I relate to what you're saying, but I, I think that the heavy parts in in Gent are just so much. When there's greater contrast between each song section, I think each song section is more impactful. And and when there's a genre like that, like in progressive metal, that allows for such a broad range of textures to be employed, the the pretty parts sound just like elation, and the heavy parts sound like fucking hell. And it's the coolest thing ever, and I and I love it honestly. The the contrast is really what what keeps my stamina for the music going. Like I love Mashuga, for example, you know. But like Mashuga is like six. Like they have songs that are like seven minutes of pure chaos. Yeah. And and as much as <laughs> dude, as much as they are one of the most like innovative bands of all time, for me personally. I have to be in a mood to tolerate that level of chaos for that period of time. And it's a mm. mood that only lasts for about 30 minutes uh, every six months. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like a tool, it's like I a can tool relate mood. to that. Yeah, it's a you tool know, so, mood. You get one, one tool yeah, so, track in and you're good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, just, it's just so much. Insane. So, so when we're talking about bands that do song, you know, like songs like that, I just think having, like, at least if, you were, if we're talking like a 12-song record and... Eight of them are heavy as fuck, you know, like the other ones, I feel like should at least throw in some contrast that just makes you appreciate the darkness and the heaviness that much more. But if you don't like the singing parts, you don't like the melodic parts, then, I mean, that's one thing. But if you I like do. singing... I yeah, do. I ahead. appreciate them. I just, the, the overbearing and the just all clean singing, I feel like that's something that is... Like, people think that that's a standard of gent, when really it's not. It just, you know, it works and it... I, I to the same I regard. It, I think I think shitty screaming over gent is the worst as well. Like if you don't have a screen that kind of goes with the like the tempo of it, and you know if you're if you're out of range, like if you have a high pitched scream and you're trying to do like a low tuned yeah. gent, oh uh -uh, get out of here, miss me with it. Like I'm not, you know, it's a it's one of those genres where you have to kind of have this delicate approach. Like hey, it has to it all has to blend fairly well, or people are gonna call us on it because you have to you have to do this style. Uh, to a, a certain standard or it's just not going to play off properly and that's going to yeah. people are going to pick up on that because it's right it spawned this whole this whole fan base of snobs not to be you know not talking shit but they are because they know what yeah. it is it's been a curated sound and they need it to be replicated in order for it to be appropriated and, and good to go god that that <clears throat> that fucks me off especially within the context of progressive music okay it's like there's there's nothing more annoying to me than an audience that that doesn't tolerate, uh, I mean, God, it's, I mean, for fuck's sake, it's called progressive. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they right. just went to say Oh, that's the same. what prog I mean, means. No, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I, I don't, I don't like that. I, and as an artist, I can't imagine being held hostage uh, to the taste of your audience in that way that you can't, it's like at that point, you're just making a product if you feel like you can't do what you want with your art. You have to do what the audience wants, otherwise you're not going to get... I mean, I get I get pissing people off and stuff, and those people can not listen to the new record if they want to. 
But as an artist, you just don't feel the same way all the time, and your art is an expression of your feelings and your and and your ideas, and those don't stay the same all the time either. No human being is that static, right? And it's just to expect to expect artists to to not. I mean, it's like that's the standard that that applies to every human being. Artists are human beings. How do you change that? Because I mean, is Gent the one like genre that when someone, hey, I'm gonna show you this band, man, or when someone shows you a band and it's like labeled Gent and you're a Gent fan, the first thing, no matter what, if you're a Gent fan, is, is, is Gent, this yeah. Gent? Yeah, is this Gent? That's your immediate judgment going into any new band or new sound that you might be introduced to. How mm -hmm. do you change that perspective in the fan base? Because again, it is, it's this, it's this culture of like, hey, uh, it, if it's not produced this way, if it's not uh, structured, mm -hmm. if it doesn't have this sound, this style, this ambiance to it, it's not going to fit within the mold everybody likes. And granted, you are going to get little branches of new well, yeah. styles or well, new yeah, blends. You, you, it, maybe then don't call it that anymore. But like. But don't don't fuck with. I mean, okay, let's 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 do a little experiment here. Tesseract. Ooh, okay. We have someone in the chat mentioning. What about Tesseract Altered yeah. State? Yep. I mean, Tesseract's okay, that, phenomenal. Dude, that band fucking destroys first yep. of all, and um, and and by the way, yeah, they're one of the few bands. Like, I'm I'm actually on the opposite side of the. Well, maybe you guys didn't say this yet, but I'm I'm kind of on the opposite side of the spectrum where I prefer. I actually, if I could go my whole life without ever hearing screams again, I that'd be fine. I really just like singing. <laughs> I think, and I also I also think there's a whole realm, a whole dimension to singing, uh, singing pitches that could be done in a much in a really aggressive way. Devin Townsend, for example, um, he basically screams melodies, and that to me is like really fucking cool. There needs to be more of that. Architects. Uh, oh, that guy, so good. That guy, yeah, that guy screams melodies to me. That's if fucking you're talking awesome. about screaming vocals. melodies, what do you think about Ollie Sykes and his newer vocal style? Yeah, they they're fucking awesome. Uh, I don't I don't really know that much about them, and that genre is not one that I tend towards. Uh, but he's great, and they're great, and they have some they have some songs that are amazing. They're, the guy who mixed their I think it's their last record, Dan Lancaster. Um, okay. He's he's one of my he's my hero. In terms of production, he's one of the best singers, one of my favorite singers. Um, he mixed one of their records or some of the songs on one of their records. Anyway, yeah, they're, I really like uh, between uh, what's it, uh, uh, Bring Me the Horizons newer stuff. I like their older stuff. Frederick Nordstrom produced their older stuff. He produced and he's responsible for that uh, Swedish melodic death metal sounds uh, like In Flames. Ah, yeah. And like Dark Tranquility and. Uh, yeah, uh, so that that's the reason I know who they are is because of the guy who produced their old record. Uh, there is a hell, believe me, I've seen it. There is a heaven. Let's keep yep. it a secret. That's a really album. underrated record in their, their catalog. Album. There's yep. a song on that record that'll make me fucking cry. Dude, the, dude, the song, yeah, the song "Fuck" on that Fuck, record. That's yes, the song. Yes, that's the song. Yes, oh, damn it. Yes, damn damn it. By the way, I can't listen to it anymore. By the way, it's, Casey it's so asked. Good. Casey asked before we went live if he can say fuck, and you said, you know what fucks me off? That has to be the best use of the word fuck. I'm gonna steal it from you. I hope you don't mind, but I'm gonna start. I, ho I was hoping he was gonna start ripping into you. <laughs> oh no, no, that's a that. Yeah, I think I. Uh, I don't know. I've said that for years. I don't know why. That's dope. I love it. There's best a lot of, of for sure. There's a lot of fucking smart points you just made. So before I lose track, Gents has always stood out to me as a. It's a fun genre. There's a lot of cool bands in it. Yeah. It's also like a musician's genre. Like if you play guitar, yeah. you gravitate towards that. Um, I've always well, heard like LA well, shows being described as like dudes that stand at the back of the crowd and say, "Oh, I could play that, but better." Yeah, it, yeah. It reminds me of that. No, it's it's no, it's it, it is though. It's it's kind of funny at at a uh, at gent shows. It's it's th there's a the higher there's a way higher percentage of musicians in the audience than at any other genre for sure. Yeah, oh, just yeah. like that. Yeah, and especially in LA because. So many of, uh, I mean, the music scene here uh, for that genre is terrific, and uh, yeah, it's it, the percentage of musicians in, in a gent in the audience at a gent show is like, it's uh, it's unusual for sure. There's definitely a joke about how many gent guitarists does it take to screw in a light bulb, but I forgot the punchline. Um, have Something you ever about heard? Bulb? <laughs> I'm guessing it's gotta yeah. be. It's gotta yeah, yeah. be just yeah. one. <laughs> So yeah, uh, something about yeah, something about Misha, yeah. 
Have you ever heard the evolved form of gent that is Thal? Oh, what? No. What okay. is that? I don't know if this Fake took news. off like it should have, Fake but news. there were two bands that did Thal. They're, they're Swedish, of course. Yes. Vildjarta. Are you familiar with Vildjarta? Uh, what? That's, uh, they're not Swedish. Are what they? are they? Yeah, they're definitely fucking Swedish. I couldn't uh, pronounce Vildjart half their name. Yeah, Vildjarta is, yeah, I thought Anup Sastry was in that band. Nope. Nope. He, okay. oh man, I forgot the name of his band now. Son of a bitch. He had a band. Wow, Damn it, they're really good too. I, Okay, well, I could have sworn he was in that band, but if, if okay, if they're Swedish, I'm actually much more inclined to check them out because Swedish they worship Mashuga. They're 100% okay. Swedish. Yeah, they are. Okay, they're cool. from they're okay. from Hudskable. Oh yeah. Okay. I have some. Their there. drummer, I believe it's the drummer. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's a drummer. His name is Buster Douglas Oldenholm. He of course. he has a band called Humanity's Last Breath. It is progressive deathcore. It may not be something you check for, but it is fucking awesome. It's super Dude, no, heavy. I, no, no, no. You've heard it? I, no, no, yeah. No, I, I really like uh, the way Scandinavians do uh, death metal and Italians. Uh, I really like, uh, what's what are they called? Uh, it's like, it's not... Fuck. It's like... Uh, it's not... It's something like with the word face or faceless. It's not the faceless. It's... Uh, it's something with like face or uh, it's they're face like your maker. No, they're, they're, they're like maker. they're like progressive symphonic death metal. Um, hold on, it's in my Spotify. Hold on, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Let not the plug. faceless. They're like LA and shit. No, yeah, and I I know I know Michael Keane. Uh, Real quick, make up your craziest uh, black metal name. Go. <laughs> oh, where's my friend Mike when I need him? I actually it would don't just... know what. I don't know what would entail a black metal uh, name. Something foreign, right? It'd have to be like Oshvek. <laughs> oh no. Something Norwegian. Oh no, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> the cool thing about Vildjarta and Humanity's Last Breath is that they, they coined that term Thal the way Periphery coined the term Gent. And their guitar, it's the same thing. Thal, Thal. It just like really drags out their progressive breakdowns. Uh, it sounds super sick. Humanity's Last Breath ended up being more of like a studio project towards the end. Like they were only doing like uh, European festivals at that. They never did a U.S. tour. I know uh, Vildyarta only did like two U.S. tours, and I don't think they're still a band. But god damn, that music was fly, dude. Uh, there's something. Yeah, there's something about uh, the way that Swedish people do heavy music that I just really like. <laughs> Or well, you, well Norwegian. The one that comes the one that comes with a side of murder. Talk about that black metal. You're talking about you're talking about no, that kind of black metal that's talent. Norway. <laughs> no, but uh, no, to me that shit sucks, by the way. No offense to those people <laughs> who are all dead. Yeah. By the way, and except for prison. <laughs> Did have you have you guys heard of Rivers of Neil? Rivers Nile? of Nile, Nile. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah they, that that record fucking destroys. Uh so that's an example of uh that of a genre that it dude, there's no singing on that record. Oh, actually, there's a little bit. Is there? Isn't there? I really Maybe. like that record. It's really, that makes me uh, think. Uh, I saw them on tour with Fallujah, and I used to really like Fallujah as well. Fallujah's good. Yes. The, yeah, they're, they're, they're not nor they're not Swedish. No, 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 no. They're not. But they, uh, they're they're like, they're, they're an example of like tech death, some kind of tech death that I really like. I'm sorry. I'm almost there. I just have to. I just. I'm really just so curious. Oh, Flesh Gods of the Apocalypse. Oh, oh yeah. Flesh God of yeah. the Apocalypse. Yeah, for yeah, that. They're, they're dope. Yeah, that they're has Italian. nothing to do with the word face. I don't flesh know why. God. I flesh think it's flesh or face. Flesh, yeah, something. You're good. Like, you're good. No, that, they, and they're dude. They're they're Italian. I think right. Italian. Uh, bands I can figure that out. I'll, I'll look it up after the show and claim I was for. right. We'll look it up right now and claim and claim that you were wrong. Dude, so if you like all the these apocalypse. Swedish bands, do you like Ghost? I, dude, I haven't given them a chance yet, but I'm... I'm I, Good, I neither have we. So, hey, shut up, I like them. Uh, so yes. far, they don't hit any of your criteria on what you like. Like, they don't scream, so that's, oh, that's a plus. Yeah, for me, yeah. They, um, they have a song that sounds like a satanic version of ABBA. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I toured with them once, and on the whole tour, I was like, oh, they're not really satanic. It's just an image. And then oh. they would do a prayer before every show, and I was like, wow, that's really sweet. They're actually, oh, they're praying to a different god. Oh, <laughs> never mind. 
Are they? I think they're. I think they're actually. Uh, and we don't have to go down this rabbit hole, but I think they're. If I remember correctly, I think they're actual Levian Satanists. They are they for sure Satanists. They yes. They don't. They don't believe in an actual Satan. They. They. They're. They're Levian Satanists. So they're atheists who, who like the story of a particular god and think they particularly that as hate the Christian God. I know that much. They had some people picketing their shows and. I know when they played the Colbert report before he went to do his Tonight Show or whatever, um, mm. they flew from Utah to go do that in New York, and they said Stephen Colbert never even shook their hand or said hi to them until they were on TV because he's, like, uber-Christian. I thought that was kind of shitty of him. But they wow. were fucking really good dudes, and then the whole band got fired, and now I don't know who any of them are anymore. <laughs> Oh, wow. Casey Casey does get five points for getting Flesh God of the Apocalypse being from Italy, and they feature yeah. member. They feature member. If, if if you guys want an Italian name, real quick, Veronica Bordaccini. Bordaccini, Bordaccini? <laughs> sounds hot. I bet her grandma can cook. Yeah, <laughs> some pasta. I'd God, I'd kill for an Italian chick. Uh, shouts to everyone in the chat that is listening. Yes, we like Rammstein. Um, somebody randomly mentioned Fuck Sky yeah. Harbor. They're cool. Yeah, Sky Harbor, yeah. Once you're into Gen, it's really hard to get out of that style as an artist. Yeah, I, I can agree. Um, mm, shouts mm. to Becca Ma- Ma- uh, Mainly. T- Tesseract did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I don't know, man. Like, I really like their new stuff. It's fucking awesome and really, really challenging and really pretty. But it gents a little. It gents a little still. They're it definitely a, a musician's <laughs> band because I don't yeah. play guitar or any instruments, so I've I have always felt like I don't like it's not that I don't like Tesseract, it's that I don't understand Tesseract. Oh and hey, you shut I'm, your I'm about to turn Casey off for sure. He's about to hate me for <laughs> you this comment. Shut your fucking uh, I, I went to it? a sh- I went to a show with Tesseract, Sky Harbor, and what's the other band that sounds just like Sky Harbor? Structures. Mm. Nope. Damn it. Oh, they were Chimps. Th- Chimp Snapper or Chimp Spanner? I don't know. His name is Dude, that guy, that Cloud oh, Kicker. Oh. Paul Ortiz, a oh, cloud kicker. And I absolutely hated the show. That's not to say they weren't talented or the vocalists weren't really good. I had no idea what was going on. I felt like cloud kicker wow. played the same song five times, and I had no idea what was going on during the Sky Harbor set. I, hey, I am sorry. Offended. I just I, I didn't offended. comprehend it. I'm not smart when it comes to guitar. Did, if it's not gender guys, fall, I don't get it. Did you guys ever get into uh, textures? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, hey, I, I fell down Swedish? that whole structures. Go. No, no, they're no, they're not. They're not part of the of the American. They're, like every time Swedish people do some American, uh, some kind of music that was like from America, or or like that was popular in America, they just do it way better. And I think textures is an example. <laughs> <laughs> Calling us out. All right, cool, fair. Dude, no, I don't know. I mean, I'm not Swedish <laughs> at all. But uh, <laughs> but you wish you were. I guess, <laughs> right? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm getting mixed signals, my guy. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I know, right? I yeah. eat Swedish fish. I know what's up. <laughs> yeah, do you know uh, textures though? Uh, they had a record called Silhouettes that both of you need to hear if you ain't yet. I'm looking it up on iTunes right now because Casey Sable told me. Dude, to do Silhouettes. It. Uh, they had records after How that. How do I spell I, I Silhouettes? S I L H O U E T T E S. Spelling bee. Champ. We're talking about textures, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get why all these like all these like uh, plural forms of of noun band name and I, animals I say, as leaders <laughs> volumes double plural volumes uh, textures structures monuments I'll give you, I'll give you a list oh yeah, yeah monument what about scale the summit that's just one they were really nice guys intervals they, intervals interval intervals yeah they were also really nice really good isn't intervals and upsastry's band. Yeah, he. Yeah, I met them last time they played in L.A. They I, now I haven't kept up with them. I don't know if they're still the band, but goddamn, they had some good releases. Woo! Yeah, were you, a, were, were you a fan of the Safety Fire by any chance? Yeah, they're. I mean, they're incredible. The the guy, uh, my friend Elliot's the singer of their new thing, uh, Good Tiger. Oh, Good Tiger, really? Yeah, I didn't think Good Tiger was a, was a was the Safety Fire guys. I love Good Tiger too. I mentioned both of them to Matt yesterday. Wait, I love I've good heard Tiger. of this Elliot guy. What band was he in? He, he was in Sky 8's Airplane. Boom. And, yeah, and uh, now he's in Good Tiger. Uh, Good Tiger, I'm, I'm 90% sure, is the guitar player 
Dez from Safety from Fire. Safety Fire. It makes sense. There, I mean, same same flow it makes sense. Two thousand eight yeah, compilation I, texture silhouettes. Got it. Adding right now. Fuck yeah, dude. The song uh, Storm Warning. Yep. All right. All right. You that got song it. is insane. The whole Storm record warning. destroys. Honestly. All right. But, I uh, promise I'll listen. Oh my god, they're signed to listenable records. <laughs> What's that? I don't know what that is. I don't either, <laughs> but that it means it's listenable. It's listenable. Yeah, they're Swedish, hence they are amazing. Well, that's an instant <laughs> grab. Um, hopefully my buddy Justin Case is tuning in because he used to make me listen to Bleed by Meshuggah in his sound yeah. system in his car, and god damn, that'll give you a nosebleed after the eighth time you've heard it at max volume. <laughs> Uh, what else did I listen to this you, week? You okay. delivered that like such a like such a news anchor. I love your delivery. Thank you. I've worked on it very hard. I have no life. And uh, goddamn, that will give you a nosebleed after the eighth listen at full volume. <laughs> next, <laughs> next we have uh, more genres <laughs> that hopefully Casey enjoys. Um, oh, are no. you a big fan of slam metal? I don't know what that is. Probably not. <laughs> Sweet. Good. Because I have a hard time describing exactly what it means. But it's basically where the drums go the whole time that you chug slowly. Bum, down, 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 Dude, down, there was... Down, okay, down, so... Down, 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 down. Okay, yeah, so there was... Uh, there's a YouTube channel I love to death called... Uh, I hate the ba scene. Yeah. Other than other than y'all. Uh, wait, you, I didn't... Wait, you guys have a YouTube? Son of a bitch! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Should have sent him a link. We're been, professionals. Been, okay, yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry, I was I was looking at the Facebook and the, and the uh, yeah every other one. Oh, it's because the Facebook <laughs> has a hundred thousand likes. That's yeah. You didn't see that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but there's there's a there's a channel I really like called Banger TV, and they just they do like uh, just metal. Um, I appreciate that they very rarely do hardcore influenced metal reviews. <laughs> oh God! So they're the anti-us. They're well, no, you guys, because you guys do all of it, I, as far as I know. Uh, but we do um, every genre. We're just trying to stick to metal, and it just happened to turn out to be all the metal you hate because we're suckers for all that core crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, there, there was, there was one record by some new band that I think is in that genre that I heard a few songs on Spotify, and it was actually they had some wacky name with some like. Uh, kind of like trash polka and meets anime cover art that was wild and they were like really trash good. polka yeah like meets anime or something that's my new okay that's my new side project trash polka uh, melodic noise core that's what i'm doing from now on <laughs> um oh okay. my notes are going to be deleted no but yeah like I, i'm open to, i'm open to that genre i just it, it's rare that i would like it but i, I heard of bands that uh, that i as far as i know is described as that and I thought it was it was wacky and I don't know if I could listen to it for more than a couple hours but I, it was like <laughs> it was kind of really fun it, uh, it was like the production was insane it yeah was it's, it was really that's the hard. thing about some of this really heavy music that I don't think a lot of the, the common listeners understand if you don't have like a good engineer and a good producer to mix this shit it is a jumbled mess of noise like yeah, it needs garbage. to be yeah. produced really well for you to understand oh dude do you hear the fucking double kick oh listen listen yeah. oh that was fucking sick dude like you need that yeah dude car um, bomb car bomb oh my god car bomb yeah yeah it's a good example it's a good <laughs> example they're incredible but like yeah, and without that production, it would be a nightmare, and that's part of the reason why producers are like so important for, for that kind of chaotic metal. Do you guys listen to Code Orange? I've never heard them, but I've heard of them. Yeah, they're uh, so they were originally called. Thank you. They were originally called the Code Orange Kids, and then they like upgraded and went to Code Orange, and they like they, they morphed their sound as well. Because you don't want to be called kids when all your fans are kids. Oh, oh I'm sorry super noise just all over the place but it is structured like it's arranged all post you know obviously but it's just i don't know you have to listen to it kind of very mathy very off tempo very you know yeah. weird structured rhythm sections uh, almost you know songs where there's just static at times and then it's just a lot of chugs no real melodies no fucking octave changes nothing you know it's just a lot of noise but then they have songs that are structured really well 
kind of all over the place. So I check yeah. them out for sure. If you're into that, yeah, I will. I will. I will. <clears throat> um, so um, if you are thinking about checking out Slam Metal, uh, there's a new album coming out by the UK Slam band Ingested. Try that one on for no plurals. Ingested. Uh, this is a genre that I hear all the kids in the ugly black t-shirts with the unreadable band logos. They love to talk about how their band is changing styles and becoming more slammy. Oh, it's got to be slammy, bro. Oh, it's getting real slammy. Yeah, we're like, more, we're like them, but we're like more slammy, which is like the stupidest shit I've ever heard. But if you like slam metal, like that shit. I don't care. Wear your cap backwards and bend up the bill and ruin it. Uh, what, what, <laughs> what is the thing that makes it slammy though like what particular element the is element it, of the the constant double kick going brrr, and then they and then like dun, slow chucks yeah okay so it's like so it's like death metal but like one part of death of a death metal song the whole song it's like yes. death metal that like okay. is reluctant yeah. to go core so it's trying to stay in the middle okay I, think like, I, I I can appreciate that. Almost like, uh, sludge metal, but like turned down and through a filter. Sludge, but fast as fuck. Like a lot of it's fast. They use a lot of traditional death uh, death metal elements more so than like core bands do. I know the UK is killing it because ingested. Like yeah. if I'm not a huge fan of slam metal, I know a lot of people are. When I go looking for it, ingested's my number one. I believe this will be like their third or fourth release. Um, this song's Dead Seraphic Forms. I'm probably saying that wrong because I don't study fucking mortuary or anything like that. But there's another <laughs> band from the UK called Acrania. Their slam is shit. They do pig squeals. Um, it, it's just a nasty, nasty oh, genre. Did I remember the first time I heard that kind of vocal was uh, Job for a Cowboy? Yeah, that that's a lot of people, day. bro. Yeah, Job. Yeah, that, right. it was that. It was that like that OG one that just started like. Bro, with the blast beat, it was like yeah. entombment of a machine or whatever. Yep, yep. It was like that was the first time I ever heard that type of vocal, and it, Art- like, and I was really, I was, it was when I was in college, and like we were really fucking high, and my friend just put it on really loud in his studio. We we're like sitting in the recording studio, super high, and he puts it on real loud, and we all just like are laughing to tears. <laughs> no, cause, no, cause like. Cause, <laughs> A lot, a lot of times to musicians who do, like, really heavy music, when something is preposterously heavy, it's hilarious. And all you can do is, is, is just laugh. Like, till you're crying, especially when you're really stoned. It's hilarious. Like, our guest last really week... Funny. Our guest last week had brought up uh, that band of Crania because he did, like, TikTok videos with the best breakdown call-outs. And... Acrania says something like "Welcome to the slaughterhouse," and then it's just a long bree, 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 <laughs> and it's it sounds like someone is repeated, repetitively stabbing a pig, and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. it's yeah. If you want to know what slam metal is, like that's it, because the shit playing behind that is just brrr, the whole way through. It's so slammy, bro. We played with this band back in the day, and they had a song called Re, but it was the abbreviation for, like, a, a return on an email. You know the R-E, right? When you oh, like, that's oh, so wow. clever. The receiver, oh, wow. See, it, yeah. was called, like, <laughs> Re, it was called, like, Re, Love Doesn't Exist or something, right? Oh, and they had yourself. a legitimate one-minute breakdown of him just going, Re, just over and over and over again. And we were like, is he just yelling Re? And we got it at that point, right? Re, Dude, that's... You know. uh... That's beautiful. actually that's actually hilarious. I love that. It's marketing. Like marketing that. in its best. If it, I, you know, I think it's marketing, and it's just well like how, well placed. How much more twentieth, like twenty first century, could a lyric be? Right. Or exactly. Re? And it's dynamic. I, almost. I always it appreciate it when bands use yeah, yeah. like MySpace terminology in their songs. So like, drop dead gorgeous, dress for friend requests hit like uh, it's to this yes. day still yes, hits a soft yeah. spot. Um. Ingested kills it though. The, the two new songs they have are brutal as shit. They're good if you're looking for some range in that slam metal genre. I think these guys offer it, but vocally, oh my god. I'm like the first to point out when a vocalist sucks or when they don't have range. Like, if you're, you know, in a local band and all you do is a bunch of highs and you call it a day and like go and get your beer tickets, like, I can't stand that shit. But the vocalist for Ingested, whatever his name is, goddamn. He has the highs, the lows, everything. It's nasty. The record's dope. I enjoyed it. Uh, I also checked out Carnifex. They had a new one. It kind of caught me out of left field because I didn't know they had a new one wait, coming hold, up. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second because, uh, yeah, I just brought up the new 
Yeah, dead seraphic for- forms right yeah. here. Yeah. Can you hear this? No. Can you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that <All> face. Right. <laughs> what is he listening to? Let's play it. What's he listening to? It's definitely not Whitney Houston. Dude, that's death metal. That's uh, what do you, you what do you call this? You call that slam metal? Yeah, like they market themselves as UK slam. Um, are they? They might be from Manchester, Manx, Manchester slam, something like that. It's very death metal. It stays true to its roots. So the guys that like Black Dahlia that hate breakdowns, they would still be able to enjoy it because. Oh yeah, like I, their... I get it. No, I get it. Yeah, because it's like. It's like power chords the whole time, but it's wow, like, no, 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 it's like melodic, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's sound, to me, I mean, because I'm a big fan of Cannibal Corpse. Yep. Mm, mm. And like, Death it metal sound, as fuck. It sounds like, yeah, it sounds like, like, parts of Cannibal Corpse. It's, it's, it's really sick. It, the production is insane. Every that's band that's in that genre has definitely oh, God, gone yes. through a Cannibal Corpse phase. Dude, the, this cover art, too, by the way. They have some sick <laughs> cover art. They also have a really interesting song called Skinned and Fucked. So if you're ever in that mood once every seven years that, to hear some brutality. That, well, yeah, yeah. hence their Cannibal Corp influence. <laughs> yeah. Cannibal yeah. Corpse. <laughs> Dude, yeah, like, Cannibal Corpse song titles are, well. This next song it? is about shooting blood out of my dick. Or I'm cutting it off, and that's the only way I can come because I have a <laughs> fetish for, you know what? I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, they literally have a song called "I Come Blood," and it's like they play yeah. that shit on Liquid Metal on satellite radio. It's fucking dude, but, crazy, dude. But for real, Cannibal Corpse is like one of the sickest live death metal bands I've ever I seen. I can just Im- I can just imagine that old school like Fuse show with that chick that did the metal. What was it called? And she had like the black hair. She was super hot. And she was like I super love- metal. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever it was called, I can just imagine. And this is their new song, "Come in Blood" or whatever it is. And it's I just come like, blood. Uh, <laughs> I can always appreciate a band with a big vocabulary. Like um, what the fuck was that band? Started with an a- abiotic. They always had really complicated song titles I couldn't pronounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, uh, that that band I actually saw live. Uh, I think it was within the last year, and they were absurd. It was absurd. Yeah, they're they're fucking good. <laughs> like, I like them. Ab- it's absurd music. It's just, it's just pure chaos controlled in like a really impressive way to musicians. That, I mean, I know that their fan base is probably legit too, but for me, as someone who doesn't like that genre, I really liked that show. That's the thing for me about death metal. Like, seeing death metal live is one of my favorite things ever, but I, I it's very rare that I'll put it on when I want to listen to music, when I'm sitting, like, when I wake up in the morning and, like, I take a piss and I, like, sit down in front of my studio, like, in my speakers and whatever, like, here, right here, and, like, it's not something I'd put on in that moment, unless it's decapitated. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't, all right. Unless it's decapitated for some cool. reason. But, like, <laughs> but it's kind of, it kind of just sucks, like, when you're sitting in front of the speakers and it's, like loud because it just like hurts your ears but decapitated is really fun quiet but anyway my point was is that like death metal shows are one of my favorite things ever but it's not as much that i would put it on in my car or when i want to listen to music like when i'm showering or when i have like devote 15 20 minutes a day to listening to music in headphones or in my studio you but brought up a the really live experiences you brought up a really good point that like you you don't want to listen to that brutality all the time when I was 22, yeah. 23, 24, that's all I wanted. I wanted the brutality 24-7. Most yeah, of the shit yeah. I listened to didn't have singing. And yeah. after a while, like especially when you're on tour all the time hearing loud noise, the last thing you want to do is come home, have your relaxing yeah. time, and then go hear loud noise again. And I've kind of strayed away from a lot of metal. And so now whenever I put on a record, it's like 9 out of 10 times, it's hip-hop. I'm listening to a lot of rap music. Do you think, like, because now you listen to more melodic stuff with the clean singing and not so much, like, brutality, do you think you're ever going to get burned out of metal in your lifetime? No. No, it's who I am. It's who I am. Truth to himself. I I wish I could, I wish I had more to say. (laughs) <laughs> that's all you need to say bro yeah. like, it makes sense I get it <laughs> yeah no like, I mean, did, so... did, even, even if I can't listen to it loud I listen to it quiet I mean like sometimes uh, like my girlfriend's asleep and I want to listen to music I listen to it quiet and 
It's amazing. That's the it's best like, time to turn up ingested. You can, you Dude, how can, about when I? How about headphones though? Headphones like when you're super drunk at three a.m. Uh, oh, and it'll like, put you into another realm, and hours will yeah. pass by. Yeah, dude. No, yeah, and then it's like the sun's rising for sure. Like, oh, I don't fuck, know. I gotta go to work. No, dude, there's no way in hell that that, uh, that heavy metal is ever gonna be out of my life. I it's think not, that there's dude, a... I, I literally have a tattooed on my bicep right here. Do you see that? Can you see, can you see this? Uh, almost. Can you see this? Have you seen this? Have can, you heard about you this? I, I can see the bicep. I could, uh, what is that, a can, skeleton? Hey, bro. What do you curl? Can you read that? What's up, dog? What do you curl? It, it says heavy metal on my body. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, yeah. all right. Yo, dude, hey, what you, what you lifting, bro? What's up? That, that's a, that's a you... funny question, though. What do you, what's up? <laughs> oh, dude, not, not that much recently. Not, uh, <laughs> not much recently. It's, uh, it's pizza tonight. Yeah. You're lifting, you're lifting some heavy metal, right? Lifting heavy metal, playing heavy metal. It's all about the metal. That's cute as fuck. Dude. Hey, so, yeah. I mean, I, I have to agree with you on the metal, man. I don't think, you know, I think a lot of people think metal is fast, loud, aggressive, has to be turned up all the way to 11, right? But that's not necessarily the case. I think you can get a Polypia, no. you can get a nice, no. relaxing groove metal, you can get, that's what's beautiful about metal. You get gent, you get the cores, you get, you know, all these off spans of it, the progressive, and it's just this nice little, it's never going to leave your bloodstream. It's, it's wired and in, then, right? And then, and then my favorite form of it, the power metal. Yeah, there you go. There you the go. Nerd, Beautiful, like the har hardcore nerd shit. Like beautiful the hardest... segue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. breeze through the next couple uh, songs that I heard because they don't even matter. Uh, protest the hero from the sky. I wanted so much out of this <laughs> oh, record. Oh, dude, they're still around. Oh, dude, yeah, so that's that. I'm glad they you put so it yes, that way. Yes. They have a new record coming out in June. I got excited for it. Oh, I heard yeah. this song. My excitement instantly died. Uh, the vocals come on at half power. That's uh, how there's, they all are. No, shut the fuck up. Okay, Always. there's no, there's no like Viking like metal presence. He's not oh, like. Really? Oh no. It it just feels like his vocals aren't powerful. Like maybe I'm just being too critical. Check it out for yourself. But I I didn't enjoy it. Um, another band that I doubt Wait, what's anyone. What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Sorry. The song is called From the Sky. Oh, the yeah, record. I don't know what the record's called, but it has a red album cover. I just. The music's okay. It sounds like protest, but then when he's singing, it's like, oh man, you used to be like, and it's not really doing that anymore. So it kind of bothered me. So the last couple albums they've done. This is this is sick. What are you talking about? It's great. It's great. And so, what Matt doesn't know is, well, he may he may know this. I don't know. But his last couple al the protest the heroes last couple albums have been crowdfunded. Uh, and so they've gone real hard into that. Oh, realm. way to make they me take, fucking feel bad. They take a lot of, of pride in what they put into their records because it is all fan based and they spend their time on it. It takes them over a year to, I think, put uh, each of the albums together after they tour for like uh. a year and a half on it. So, you know, they're in a, you know, you get a new protest album probably every two and a half, three years. Less pride, right? more vocals. And uh, I mean, I think that's just them progressing. He's probably not being as harsh on his voice, but I think you're getting the the protest that everybody. That would likes. make sense. Like yesterday easier performance. It. This is great. Hey, if you want oh, some, sorry, I, I have it like I have it on really quiet in my headphones. I can hear you guys. What no, you, you're you're good. How do you feel about Norma Jean? Real quick, Casey. How do you like Norma Jean? Uh, what never did. Never oh, okay, cool. Never mind. Then move along. No, no, yeah, I, no, sweet. No, I mean, they're <laughs> no, they're great. They're really fucking good at what they do. It's like. It's just the genre is not one that I okay. like, uh, converge. That's why I asked. Do. That's why I yeah. asked because there's a band that just dropped an album. They're, the name of them is called Deathbreaker. If you, if you want to check them out, but they're very Norma Jean-ish. They bring the okay. noise. They bring like the high reverse octaves real high, like on the you know the 12th and the 9th fret. They bring it up real high, uh, super twangy, uh, almost like the southern sound to it as well. But it's really yeah. good. We were talking about noise core earlier, so I figured I'd shout them out. Yeah, I really like... Uh, well, I actually didn't know they classify as such. Uh, noise core to me is like uh, a made-up genre. Math core grind. Like, uh, like there's a band that there's a band that we toured with uh, when I was in Periphery called uh, uh, Tony Tap Dance Extravaganza. Yes, yes. yeah, Tony, yeah, the Tony yes. Dance the Tap Dance Extravaganza. Josh Travis. Yeah. yeah, yes, Josh Travis was in Glass Cloud. He was also in Amir okay. for a second. He's he's, he's in Amir now. That's yeah. who does the music for Amir because Frankie fired the whole band. There you go. Oh. Um, yeah, to so, me. I mean, I, I don't know if they're noise 
whatever the fuck. I mean, the noise falls under like the grindcore, mathcore, all that offbeat, off tempo, weird time signatures. That's all considered like noise core, right? Or okay. noise Josh core, also whatever, plays so. like a 15 string guitar. Uh, yeah. Fucking obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the eight string, seven strings arrangements that people are doing now? I mean, I feel like that you have to jet almost with the seven string. I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean the funny thing is my favorite songs and like my favorite periphery songs are the six string songs. Right. Yeah. Because you can do gent with six strings, right? You, I mean, it's, you, you it's, know, it's, I, it's, I don't know, man. You gent to me, you gent harder when it's six strings because like once you get down into the register of a bass guitar, it's just a bass. Uh, Man, it's, it's just a slappy It's really face. hard to manage. It's, yeah, it's, it's really it's really hard to manage like a gent sound when you're that low. I mean, dude, Misha and like millions of guitar players have mastered the seven string gent sounds, and I think it's really cool. I just for me, it's like I don't know. If, I don't know how many of your listeners are uh, musicians, but to me, my for this episode, tuning, a few, probably a few. Yeah, yeah. My my favorite tuning for a guitar is C. I like I like uh, C G C F A D. Yep, yep. Yeah, actually, yeah, drop C particularly. Yep. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that, that's that's what I tune to. That's what I write a lot all of my metal songs core. In. A lot of metal core. A lot of uh, like the post hardcore, the darker, deeper stuff. Devil Wears Prada. All that was drop C for a long time. Well, yeah. See, for me, uh, where it came from was uh, 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 was uh, in Flames and Hammerfall yep. and yep. like the Swedish the Swedish metal bands were all tuning to C when I was in middle school. And when I learned to play guitar, yep. it was actually fun. I remember when I first learned to play guitar, I had to take my guitar to Guitar Center for a guy to set it up. At the <laughs> time, it was actually, it was Sam Ash. And I was like, could you set this up for, like, C? And he was like, what? That's not even possible. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was like before anyone in America was doing that. It was definitely hard to be a metal metalcore guy back in the day. Um, I've also yeah. heard Patrick Samale from Reflections say that it's better to gent on a six string. So I've I've heard that before. Dude, um, I'm not. Yeah, like I'm. I love guitar and I play guitar every day and I like love my amp and I have like cool shit. But like I'm not one of these experts. Me, Misha and like my, uh, I could name like ten people who are un unbelievable guitar players who specialize in that sounds. And they would probably disagree with me on nearly everything I just said. So, <laughs> oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, Misha, I mean, come on, Misha's in periphery. They have eight strings, they have seven strings. Like, it's Misha's just... kind of, like, untouchable, though. <laughs> like, if he told me, like, how to play guitar, I'd just listen to him and say, fuck everything We refer to him else. by yeah. name. There's only a few artists in each, you know. Yeah, you don't even call him by his last name, name, dude. Yeah, yeah, Misha, yeah. everybody knows Misha. Like. <laughs> Misha Band yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, dude, dude I'm, I, I come from a way different background than everyone that is in the gent community. I was never into metalcore or hardcore or any of that stuff. For me, it was always 80s metal. And, like, six strings are just, like, that's what guitar is to me. I, I've never even played a seven string. And my friend Ivan, who's in a... Actually, you guys should check out the band called... Uh, I don't know how you pronounce I think it's called Gia or Jai. It's J-I-A. Uh... The, the 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 drummer from Animals as Leaders, Matt Gartz Matt Gartzka, is say no their, more, fam. Yeah, he's say on. No their, more. Yeah, he's on their he's on their the three songs that they recorded. Uh, I sang I I sang on two of them, and the guy from the Contortionist is on the one that they just put out. The Contortionist, say no more, fam. Yeah, check out the new one called uh, uh I think it's called Become or uh, J I A. Yeah. This I'm is coming up anything. with a lot of Asian yeah. stuff. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, no, here we go. Become featuring Michael Lassard. This has got to be it. Yeah, and then the one that they put out before that, I sang on, and then the one they're putting out next, I sang on, too. Oh, Drift featuring Casey Sable. I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then the, yeah, but uh, the, the new one that has uh, the guy from The Contortionist is way better than the one I was on. <laughs> check, check out that one. That's a weird plug. Yeah, right. No, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> not gonna lie. No, I mean that's just hey. my opinion. I guess I just hate listening to my own shit. But uh, dude, uh, yeah, Matt Matt Gartska plays drums on all those songs. And what was the point? Yeah, Ivan is the guitar player in that band, and he is the COO of Tosin Abasi's guitar company. Nice. Uh, oh, Abasi. Nice. Oh, that's a good name. Yeah, Tosin from Animals. He's he's got a yeah. fucking classy sounding name. I mean, let's be real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tosin's the man. But uh, what, what, what were we? What were we talking? We were talking about something else, though. Uh, we were saying fuck seven string guitars. I'm just 
<laughs> oh yeah, right. So yeah. So like so like so one of my best friends, Ivan and, and Jaya or Jia, like is COO of a company that specializes in eight strings. Right? Oh, dope, okay. Yeah, so that's kind of like the point I'm making is I'm surrounded by all these guitar players who destroy me at guitar and I, I'm the only one who has the opinion that six strings is enough. Right. Hey, we support you here. Yeah. And we're joined by Casey Sable, the metal elitist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, you yeah, haven't the, done like, anything elitist. Classic, classic heavy metal, though. Like, yeah, I, I do. That's the, that's the thing, though. It's like heavy metal. Heavy metal isn't. That's not something people say anymore. They say metal. No, yeah, metal. the heavy's gone. It's just heavy metal is different... metal, metal core. Uh, what is, what the hell is ale storm? What the it's fuck got... is that shit classified as? Isn't that because it, like, uh, it gave me cancer listening to it? I mean, yeah, I don't I, was... I don't like to be rude and completely shit on a band, but I would have been better off walking into traffic than listening to that record. Wait, hold on, yeah, let me see here. Uh, I could probably tell you in like two seconds. It's beer, it's ins- like it's beer inspired metal. It's beer Isn't and it fucking like... pirates. Yeah, it's like uh, hold on, wait, play. Let's see here. Uh, I'll tell you in two seconds. There's only one time that I care about pirates, and it's when I'm at Disneyland and I'm feeling nostalgic. Dude, this sounds like Dropkick Murphys, but, like, metal. <laughs> it's like drinking power metal or something. It's- the only time you'll ever hear Dropkick Murphys referenced on this show. Congratulations. I mean, I also don't Thank know you. anything about that, about that culture or genre, but... It's oh, it's like, easy. It's- Drink beer and watch hockey. <laughs> and, like, yell vaguely in tune. Your favorite movie's got to be The Departed. You got to be like part Irish. Yeah, yeah. Love drinking beer. Oh, are they American? Hey, you fucking uh, you yeah, my cousin. He'll fucking make that gabagool. You huh? had to have skated. You fucking mook. In high school, potentially had like a safety pin put through your body at one time. You definitely have put a safety pin through your nipple. You've trying to had impress girls at a party. A, a mohawk. Wait, dude, is, dude, is Elstorm American? There's no way they're American. Hold on. They might be because it's like a play off what what's that other band Hailstorm? No, they're from they're, from, they're yeah they're Scott. Okay, yeah, of course. Oh, so okay, so they're halfway forgiven, but it it still doesn't make the music any better. <laughs> um, do you guys want to hear the records that I, I hated I pro- or the records I, probably, I like? I pro- did I probably get to like get into? We're still this on records. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you hey, didn't know, Casey's not actually near a street. Seven. He's just playing Grand Theft Auto Five right now. So shout oh, out you to can you. hear that. <laughs> Love the 67 Chevy you have in the backyard. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift outside, homie. Um, there That's is hilarious a record, that you guys could hear that to me. I, there's yeah. a record I found this week that uh, high school Brian would have liked, but you probably didn't listen to it. I don't know if I sent it to you. I can't pronounce his name right. So the band is called Tetrarch. T-E-T-R-A-R-C-H. Go figure, okay? The song is called I'm Not Right. And if this band existed 15 years ago, they would for sure be a mainstay on OzFest. But since OzFest and every tour known to man is now dead... What's the um, name? What's the name of it? Spell it again? Tetch, Tetrarch? T-E-T-R-A-R-C-H. Go figure. Go go figure that out for me. I dug it because it sounds like a fucking metalcore version of Edema. Sorry, all the young crowd. I know you don't know oh, who Edema no. is. Oh, no. Edema. Shouts to 2002. <laughs> A uh, little fun fact. Oh, yeah. Uh, get the, inside the front, you. The front man of Edema was actually Jonathan Davis of Korn's half-brother. Yep. And that's why they sounded wow. just like Korn Jr. Um, the other song I like <laughs> this week was... Are you talking about Baby Korn? Yeah, Baby Korn. Uh, Korn <laughs> on the Cob. The other song I liked this week was Pixelate by Volumes. Volumes mm. is always dope as fuck. Cool-ass band. I like Mike Terry a lot. Oh, uh, man. I miss... Uh, Dude, I got, some, I got some stories about Volumes. New in I, wake. Oh. I miss Diego as well, and that's honestly, I'm no, not. I'm not just, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. I wouldn't. No, 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 I'm not. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't say anything. Like, I mean, they were my homies for for years, and uh, that's. I mean, that's part of the reason I'm on one of their songs. But, Boom. That's another thing. You've guessed it on a shit ton of songs, my man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I and dig that, this that, shit. That, that, that came that came about by accident, actually. Too, there was supposed to be another. Uh, I don't know if I can. I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to say who was gonna sing on the volume song that I sang on, so I won't. But the guy bailed at the last minute. My friend Brandon Paddock, who's one of my best friends in the world, was producing the record, and he called me. He was like, "The guest feature just uh, bailed last minute. Can you sing this part that we wrote, like real quick?" I was like, "Yeah, I got it over to him." So that was like that feature was just very random, and because of the fact that the guy who they had scheduled to do it just bailed at the last minute. 
I can understand but, how but, that's but the guy, fucking the guys annoying. In volumes, the guys in volumes were... Diego was one of my close friends, and, uh, and Gus, his brother. I'm trying to think who else was in... Yeah, I was really just close to Diego, so... Diego's a great songwriter. That's why I'm so interested in this next release because they're going to have to figure out how to get on without him. And yeah. he was the main dude in that band. Like, that was his band. So it's going to be interesting to see what route they go. They still yeah. sound similar. Um, Gus is no longer in the band. They've Michael Barr has rejoined, which I'm glad because, um, honestly, I didn't like his solo work. Uh, it always sounded... It always sounded like it was missing something. Like... Michael Barr's screams on this record pick up where they left off from their fucking Via release, like dude, the he, media dude, scare he, days. Dude, rec- watching him, watching Michael record vocals is one of the most, like, insane experiences. <laughs> is he real it's, crazy with it, like layers? Dude, he, no, no, his, just, his delivery, he, he is one of the, he probably has, like, one, like, top five for me, best screams ever. Like, and his, the way wow. he does it, and when okay. he records, the way he records, his passion when he's recording, his technique, he's unbelievable. I don't even know if he knows, like, what he's doing, but he, I mean, like, on purpose, you know? Hearing but you he, say that, it makes more sense because it feels like he never left the band. Like, he picked up from 2011 on this record, and he uh, sounds vicious as fuck. Like, I had to recheck it because I thought Gus was back on the record, but he's not. It's It's Michael. And he's going ham and uh, hot take. I did not like his R and B work. I like that style. I never heard it. Never heard okay, it. Okay, maybe yeah. that's why. <laughs> um, I like Black Bear. I like a lot of R and B artists. But to me, Michael Barr's R and B songs were always like a crappy, soggy McDonald's burger when you were really just craving White Castle. It never <laughs> fucking hit the spot. It was just there. Like, you could listen to it, and it, it wasn't a song you'd be like, oh, that's bad, that sucks. But it's like, yo, this is R&B, and I want to hear the voice do this and this, and it didn't. So it's crazy to see how great of a screamer he is when a lot of people don't respect screaming vocals. And he left to do this whole R&B venture. I don't know if he, like, rejoined because the R&B shit didn't work. Um, I don't know of a lot of tours he did with the R&B stuff, but I am very glad that he's back. And I think if he adds... Because we only have like two songs so far off this volumes record. If he adds more clean singing, it's gonna sound way cooler over volumes than it ever did on his R and B stuff. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I don't. Yeah, I never heard anything he's done other than uh, volumes. I've never heard it. Have you ever heard Black Bear or like any of those other like white R and B artists? I love Black Bear. Black Bear is no. Good. Okay, well, Black Bear also can't sing without auto tune. Um, I, I like. Still... I like. I like Black. Uh, Black singers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Black Bear is a white kid. Um, hopefully, he still wants to join the show one day, even though I said that he can't sing. Um, records I didn't <laughs> like this week. Um, I don't know who half of these people are. Are you in Run? I didn't like anything from them. Uh, Cross Faith. I wanted to like you because I saw you on Warped, but I didn't like. Oh, it. dude. Oh, didn't they have that one? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're doing a lightning rounds. Go ahead. <laughs> Please let us hear your let us hear your crossfade. Go for it. Tell Go me about crossfade. No, no, wasn't no, no. I'm just saying, like, wasn't that? Didn't they have that? Uh, here we go again on Spotify. Hold on, cross. It's like an keep... EP, I believe. It's something about space oh, age. Oh no, 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 oh no! I was thinking of crossfade. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I really didn't like Ill Storm at all. I'm sorry. There's nothing nice I could say about that. <laughs> It's pirates and like butt metal. Um, yeah, go away butt forever. Metal. That would only Dude, butt be metal, cool. Yeah, fuck, fuck, butt, butt metal. metal fucks you. It's instead of you fucking it. That's a, that's a good way to put it. The only way I would listen to Ailstorm is if I was playing Sea of Thieves, which of course you know I don't <laughs> recommend that game every single week we're on here. Still playing GTA 5, shouts to 86 ounces in a duffel bag gang, what's going on here? I didn't yeah. like Ailstorm at all. I don't care about pirates unless I'm on Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, yeah, I'm, s- I'm, yeah stoked I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a pirate, I'm not like a fan of the pirate aesthetic. It's fucking stupid, dude. Like, would you go to a pirate well, themed steakhouse? No. Yeah. What? <laughs> Whoa. You I don't know. What are we talking? Are we talking high end steaks? What are we talking here? Is it legit? What? Okay. Do I get to bar, walk a plank? No, the, the, do I get to walk dude, a plank? Do you like, do you like Lord, Lord of the Rings? I mean, come on. 
I hate Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is not okay, our favorite, Casey. Right. Sorry. All right. There is if only one leave, return, it's not my and it is of the Jedi, not of the King. If you want to leave now, Casey, it's fine. We get it. We just... No, no, it's fine. No, I, did I not one of these, like, L-O-T-R? Do, I just, I think that, like, I think there's a music version of all of that kind of, like, fantasy realm Accurate. cheesy music there is, movie. There is. Like, yeah. It's like if you want to listen to the music version of Lord of the Rings... Yeah, it exists. If you yeah. want to listen to, uh, um, if you want to listen to the music version of Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, it exists. It's Ailstorm. Like, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm stoked for the new Currents record. I'm stoked for the new Ingested record. I'm stoked for the new In Hearts Wake record. And based solely off the name and the cover alone, even though I didn't like the singles. The new Weezer album, Van Weezer, it looks like a fucking Van Halen album. Uh, I hope they do something special with it. I know they did a cover album, uh, like an album or two ago. Um, as the gigantic truck drives through Casey's house right now. No, that's actually the fucking, that's actually the fucking Hell's Angels on their uh, quarterly The entire rally. starting grid for the Indy 500. <laughs> oh, wow, listen to that. Uh, we we also were gonna be reporting live from the uh, fucking crash derby here in Los Angeles. Demolition oh. Derby starts in two minutes. Get your uh, shit. I'm sorry, guys. I think. Did you guys know that we were reporting from an actual metal show? Did you guys know that it's got a bunch of cars in the parking lot? That's where we're at. Uh, that reminds me. This episode I think- of I Hate the Scene is brought to you by Fuck Twelve. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> fuck them right in their stupid asses. <laughs> Wow, the hell's, the, this episode of I Hate to See is brought to you by the Hell's Angels, ruining podcast dynamic processing since 2020. They had no Who protest. needs a pandemic on when way. there's terrible motorcycles outside? Oh, shit. Holy uh, fuck, this episode's brought to you by Penn's Oil. Get your fucking oil changed. This episode of I Hate the Scene is brought to you by Chick Fil A for all you Christian motherfuckers. Shouts to that boy. I can't wait. Can, can you like? Can we like timestamp that so I can go back and listen to how hilariously loud that was? For oh, you all? we do. We do a best and worst moments. It'll definitely make it. So I don't. Yeah, oh, you can God. just you can check my TikTok in a week. It'll be on there. Man. Yeah, I think oh, I think the microphone on my display is pointing out my window. I think so, your equipment's just too good, bro. You're gonna have to like dumb it down for us next time. It's like too. No, this is the mic on my uh, on my display. Oh well, it, it works. Yelling. Apparently, I'm yelling too. Wait, so wait, can we do a thing real quick? Can you hear me if I talk at this volume? Yeah. Oh, you sound elegant. Okay, I'll just talk at this. Volume Are you about to serenade us, bro? No, dude. When I sing, it's real loud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, yeah, that's so a... continue with your lightning rounds. Let's go, uh, Matt. That was the end of the lightning round. Um, we're going to listen to the Weezer or the uh, Lady Gaga album later. Uh, there were some dope rappers that had good releases, but I didn't get a chance to review them all because I was trying to inhale all the metal I could. So new Migos, new G Erbo, new Diplo, new Little Yachty, and Freddie Gibbs and the Alchemist. Listen to that shit. I don't care if you like metal or rock. Listen to Freddie Gibbs and the Alchemist. West Coast and this motherfucker. All Alfredo. Day. It's called Alfredo. Yes, and there- the album cover is dope. There's a, uh, uh, do you guys remember the band, uh, Boys Like Girls? Yes. Yeah. So their singer, uh, Martin Johnson, um, or I, I don't know what he's going by, Bennett or Johnson, uh, one of my best friends, Brandon, is, like, uh, co-producing their new stuff. They're called The Night Game now. Nice. And that shit is, like, pop gold, if you like pop music. It's incredible. I do like pop music. Um, I haven't had an artist turn me on to as much music as you have tonight, so props to you. If you do like pop music and you like rock music, I have to give a big, huge, pirate-dressed fashion rock shout-out to my boys in Palais Royale, Sumerian Records. Mm. They have a new record called The Bastards. This is going to be the anthem of your summer if you're in high school. If you're not, get ready to date a bunch of high school girls because this record is fucking great. Oh, my God. Um, very reminiscent of like the brilliance and panic at the disco. Um, they're very rock and roll. I love them because when they signed to Sumerian, they had no fucking clue who those Sumerian bands were. And I found that to be like mm. super interesting. They didn't even know what Sumerian was. Um, they're some of the best people on earth. So go check out that record. And then there's new secrets, new aversions, crown, new misery signals. Um, you told me hey, to listen to Caligula's horse and we like half of it. Oh, I can't imagine you liking any of it. 
I liked it. We, it was good. It was good. Oh, you just think I'm some fucking music imbecile? <laughs> like I only listened to little Uzi Vert? Because that's only on Thursdays, dickhead. <laughs> I don't know. I just it's thought it Friday. was like, it's just like, it's like just turbo prog rock, like uh, barely metal, but like it's metal. I it's guess. a lot of clean singing. A lot of clean singing. <laughs> Clean. That term has hit a nerve with you, my friend. Yeah, he's about to have a log out. He's about to exit yeah, yeah. the show. Oh, shit. Clean First time we've singing. lost a guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so, Casey Sable. Candle in the Dark is the new single. Um, I'm assuming this is not about candles on an aisle at Pier 1 Imports. What is this song about? Uh, the song's about basically um, doing... If, if you're the only one who thinks that something is righteous, then that's the most of the reason that you need to do the thing, right? Like, do what's right, especially if you're the, if you're the only one who will. What is that? His NASCAR. NASCAR. It was a toy uh, car, because I heard a car. Oh, is it still mind. happening? <laughs> We're the only yeah. ones that hear it. Casey's not going to pick up on it. <laughs> no, I hear it. I just don't hear how loud it is compared to my voice. <laughs> you're fine, Obi. <laughs> Candle in the yeah. dark. Yeah, it's uh, it's just um, man. Of course, you guys wait for me to do this once I'm like actually. You know. <laughs> how many? How many? How many viewers are there right now? Right now uh, we have about seven hundred and seven. Right now we have about twelve in the chat. So far, there's been a total of about three hundred different people that have come in. Oh, okay. Um, there's yeah. gonna be a lot more when it goes on YouTube and my OnlyFans for the eighteen plus crowd. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Promo I mean, code chaos. When, whenever uh, whenever I post Candle in the Dark, uh, every time I post it, I usually include a caption that says, uh, I ask that you do what's right, especially if you're the only one who will. Um, I don't really want to frame it in any particular political persuasion. I'd rather people just listen to the song and engage in the conversation through social media. Ooh. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, kind of what, that, that's kind of the whole reason I make music. You want it to like, spark a conversation. Indeed. I dig that. I fucking dig that. I'm glad that I asked all our listeners how they were feeling about the song instead of just telling them to listen to it blindly. Yeah, I don't want to tell people uh, what I'm saying. I want to talk to them about what, what, how it makes them feel and how it makes them, if it makes them see the world in any particular way that they hadn't previously. Uh, well, it made me feel horny. How do you want to talk about that? <laughs> well, let's see your dick. Oh, that'll be on the no, OnlyFans later like tonight at IHateTheScene.cock. Yes, I just I have to see you prove it. Honestly. Dot cock. Yeah. Oh no. Okay, guys. Man, this is like the third guest that has to see my dick. It's getting weird. Um, He's about well, to be the you, third you, that didn't hey, like it too. I didn't. I didn't start that. <laughs> How would you? For, I just. I just asked for evidence. <laughs> That's my favorite rapper. Um, how would you yeah. describe the sound that you were going for? We already talked about like it not being gent. <laughs> so would you just call yeah. it metal? No, I, I don't know. Uh, I think that's up to the audience uh, to decide. I just, for to me, it's a it's a combination of um, my '80s metal influences mixed with uh, my pop influences mixed with my. Uh, uh, my I love uh, orchestral music and symphonic music. It's it's a combination of of all of the things I love the most. Uh, most of which is '80s metal and pop and symphonic, uh, like kind of soundtrack music, like you know film scores. Yeah. Uh, is it uh, also I love I love electronic music too. So there's a lot of electronic uh, elements infused. Is it safe but, to say you have a little bit of a meatloaf influence? No, I've never even listened to Meatloaf. Really? <laughs> you oh, tried. Oh, shit, dude. I yeah. thought for sure you had been like, yeah, no. <laughs> I legitimately <laughs> thought that you had. Because you got. rock much? You got so soulful, like, right in the middle of the track. And I was like, wow, dude. I wasn't expecting it to take that turn. And you got slow. And you kind of, yeah, you did turn into, like, an 80s power ballad. Oh, like the second. big, like, like, the big epic 
parts and shit was like yeah as it kind of slowed down as you got out of like the course the second time yeah. and you slow down into like your bridge and like don't get me wrong the entire song has that power anthem style right like you do want people to stand up start screaming at the top of the lungs right you're fucking asking them the question mm. getting people all riled up but when you hit that part I was like dang dude he's going back this is you know I was given asking Alexandria a couple weeks ago I was giving him some shit for bringing the 80s metal back and I was talking some shit but you did it in a way that I was I thought I was in the fucking 80s man I thought I was listening to some That's serious funny. power ballad no it's beautiful and it's nice that someone uh from like the metal scene right the the scene that we're all involved in can put out something like that and it's not doesn't seem forced it's not like a cover it's nothing that's like almost you know you're, you're really it's not manufactured it's so what you're about obviously right and now it's shining yeah. through with this interview with the actual music and it makes sense after talking to you about it yeah it's it's interesting I, it, there's there's very little in terms of the overall aesthetic of the music that i did on i did uh trying to fit in to a box or anything like that it was just i had been doing music for so many years where i was trying to fit into a particular box or a particular genre and n none of it worked and so i just gave all of that up and just did exactly what i thought would be the coolest thing to do for every part of the song and it wasn't until i started doing that uh that i found my identity my identity as an artist and um what is that uh, no, I was just waiting for you to finish because I had a, a you made me spark a question. <laughs> he likes to yeah. have seizures from time to time. It's yeah, it looks like it. I have a brain fart, but I'm actually like in depth thinking about like, wow, that's a thought provoking content. Not a lot of our guests bring that to us. So shouts to you, Casey. Um, yeah, it takes you, a long time. Yeah. Do you prefer <laughs> for me to think of smart shit? I know. No, do no, you no. prefer to be a solo <laughs> artist than affiliated with a band? Because I've been in a band before. I know how fucking difficult it is to get four, five, six, seven, eight guys to think the same way you do and try to have the same goal as you. Is this kind of what you've always wanted to do? Yeah. And yeah, that's the um, only answer we need is a yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there, the thing is, though, is that uh, for me, it was about it was about uh, being able to facilitate my strengths and make up for my weaknesses and I found that the best way for me to do that is to work with just one co-writer uh, instead of having to democratize six opinions or something it's more difficult when more people are involved right well I mean it depends like this isn't this isn't like this isn't this doesn't go back to why I left periphery or anything. No, um, I didn't ask that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know it's just that a lot of people watching would probably associate me with them. I was like from 2008. That's like ancient history. Yeah, yeah it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. If, for me, it's it's just that I, I have a very specific vision. And wherever I come up short, that's where I want to figure out. I want to figure out where those areas are. And then I want to choose the specific person who can, you know, basically make me shine in the areas in which I'm, I'm failing. And so my, my best friend, Jay Denton, is my co-writer on all the songs that I'm releasing over the next several months. Uh, and he, he's basically like my lyrics guy. Like I bring, I bring the title idea, I make the whole track, I do all the production and like play everything and stuff. And then I'm like, here's the concept I wanna write about, here's the title idea I have. Let's debate it for a couple hours, figure out what the best way is to to express it through the lyric uh, with the melody that I have. Sometimes he co-writes the melodies. But for me, I've, I've just always worked best when I get to do nearly everything and then there's some other fresh set of ears that can contribute their ideas where they complement my weaknesses. And Jay and I have a great relationship because he's, you know, he comes in with fresh ears and he's great at lyrics. And uh, he, so he co-writes the lyrics with me. And uh, I, I just, yeah, I don't function well in democracies. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's actually really rare to find someone that you feel complements the other half of your style of what you're going for. Um, well, it took I've a long always, time. It took a long time to find that person, yeah. I can imagine, yeah. I've always found it really difficult to be in a band and work with other people, um, which reminds me that Brian kicked me out of his band twice, so let's not forget about that. Um you were talking about how you were an expert producer. I've been told 
by some people that you have a pretty sweet studio and you do some pretty sweet work. Um, who's some other people besides Frankie Palmieri that you've produced on? Most of them no names, honestly. Give uh, them to us. We want to hear. <laughs> we want to hear yeah, projects no, I, they've worked on. Something. Well, I can't even remember all of them. Uh, That's honestly. the best. <laughs> Most producers yeah, no, can't I, unless they wrote them down. Yeah, I never, which I didn't and don't care about. Who's been honestly, some of your like favorite? I, maybe who's been some of your favorite? Who's the worst? <laughs> and the worst. Oh man. Well, I'm definitely not going to. He's say like the Frankie worst. Palmieri. Just kidding. <laughs> There's no way. No. Oh, man, you know, I wish you had told me this before we went live, because I could have thought about it. But... He didn't oh, come man, with some hate. He didn't come no. with some heat and some hate. Way to call me out of the podcast. I didn't, <laughs> hey, man, no, no. I didn't plan. Yeah, I had so much bad. music to review. He'd yeah, have brought too, the hot too bad, It's too bad this whole thing wasn't scripted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's the beauty scripted. of it. Because now we can, like, shoot from the hip, man. Yeah, I just, it's just so hard for me to think back to, like, okay, so there's a there's a guy, uh, my friend named uh, Ralston Eddie Henry. He's in a band called Paradiso. They're probably my favorite artists that I've ever worked with. Um, and my, my best friend Jay has a project that I, uh, I sang on one of the songs and co-produced the song that I sang on. I'd say that's my, that's my favorite thing that I've done... Uh, that I actually had production on. Uh, it's called uh, Endure Studios for Home. I sang on one song on the record, uh, and then yeah, and then there's Paradiso, who I don't I don't know if they have anything out. I think they might have one thing out. Do you work with like a shit ton of gent bands, or is that just a shitty assumption? Well, so I sang uh, I sang uh, I sang on an O oh Sleeper song. I sang. I on found that on iTunes. Yeah, I sang on a, uh, that was a long time ago, I sang on a volume song a long time ago, and then uh, Ivan, before we were like really close friends, had started that band Gia, or Jaya, or however it's pronounced, and he hired me to <laughs> sing on those two songs. We'll figure and, it out eventually. Yeah, eventually, yeah. Um, yeah, and other than that, yeah, I don't know, it's not, I, I wish I had more time to think about it. But, uh, it's it's cool. We'll bring you back in six episodes, and we'll have your whole production yeah, figured out. A, yeah, I'll have a list. Yeah, <laughs> you can be on the shit show. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff I've sang on. I, I've sang on like jingles, and I've uh, you like one for like fucking uh, what was it like uh, Capri Sun? What's your <laughs> oh a Capri Sun song for real? Like a yeah, commercial? Like, yeah. Like, Whoa, oh, dude, that's awesome. That's cool, like, man. Right, yeah, just like lots of random shit like that. Uh, what's uh what's like a guilty pleasure music you're into or st other than the country i know you mentioned country is an influence but what's like a guilty pleasure you listen to that you don't want to tell anybody ever except for the 700 people watching right now uh nickelback one of my favorite oh all time. Yeah. for real that's, Not yo, that's ironic. a real producer right there my friend not yeah. ironic do you have you <laughs> ever met the guys or know any of them you know chad no. i'm one i'm actually like there's only a few degrees of separation between me and him who's one of my favorite uh, singers honestly it's just one of those bands that like i know is taboo to say you love yeah it's like a creed but, uh, hey we love controversial takes bro so say it yeah it's better My, than creed. No, dude, dude i dude i mean come on listen to uh nickelback has a on their newest record they have like a fucking gent song on their newest record like, whoa for real. hold up hold up like hold and no up. one's and, and nearly no one in gent disagrees about that but no one's talking about it Everyone's like, oh, by the way, there's a new fucking Nickelback song. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I saw their uh, performance at Red Rocks. Like, not live. I saw it on um, Access TV because I'm a piece of shit. And it was actually really good. It's something about the Machine Tour. And it was a yeah, really yeah, good that's show. That's the new record. That's the new record. Yeah, yeah dude. I, 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 saw that. I saw them live on that tour. And I am not exaggerating when I say it. Like, in terms of, like... Like hard rock, in terms of the rock genre of live shows I've been to, they're number one, and Gojira is probably number two. Wow. Oh, what a rando! Wow. Gojira! Oh, they're hey, Gojira. Hard. They're what? amazing, yeah. They're my favorite bands in that genre, I'd say. Whatever fucking genre that is. Yeah, the, what what are they? Like fucking mathcore? They're fucking Gojira? Nasty. No, Gojira is just like yeah, no. metal. Yeah, they're, just yeah like, they're, like, they're nasty. They're, they're just like metal. They're to me, Gojira is like metal, no qualifications otherwise needed. Like personified. 
Yeah, they're just metal. They have some melodic parts, but they're not like melodic in a particular direction. They're just melodic. The heavy parts are just like metal. I don't even know what else to call them. Okay, now that I just confirmed it, you sang Across the Bed with Volumes? That's a fucking sick song. Because they do a lot of guest features. I couldn't figure out which one you were on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, a was... sick-ass song. Glad you like it. Yeah, I, I didn't write any any of that. I just, uh, like I said, my friend Brandon was producing it, and the feature that was supposed to be on it dropped out, and so I just like was called in last minute to do it. That's a, I, true, that's a true professional right there, getting called in. The bad signal goes up, and you answer it like a goddamn pro. I love it. <laughs> I'll be real, I, I could have fallen though. out with volumes if they kept metalcore, but like that song was so like, it had a mainstream R&B approach to it while being a very metalcore song that, god damn, that shit stuck with me. I oh, now think, I'm dying to know who canceled on them. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think there were parts, like there are other songs on that record that have singing that people thought was me, but isn't. Like I'm only on that one song, and I think there are also singing parts in that song other than the ones I did. I can't remember. It was too long ago. I'm pretty sure the whole song is screaming except for the chorus. Yeah, straight up. I'm going to go ahead and spread the lie and say Casey Sable guessed it on that whole album. <laughs> Might as well, because uh, yeah, I'm going to have, yeah. like, Volumes is one of those bands that they don't, like, credit the guest appearance unless you have the CD booklet, which it's 2020, so nobody has a CD booklet anymore. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to. I'm gonna have to look up and see who the fuck else was on that record. But that's that's my favorite song off that record, "Across the Bed." It's like yeah. a sexual R and B song from a metal band. It's it was such might, a weird approach. I, I need to listen to it again. I can't remember if there's other singing on it than what I did. But yeah, that's honestly back to what you were saying. The uh, um, the way that consumers consume music nowadays is so much different than it's ever been. I mean, uh, the polls show that under 20% of people under the age of 30 have ever listened to a full album. And so that's one of the many reasons why, like part of my marketing strategy for my stuff is going to be like consumption oriented. Like I'm not putting out an EP or an album ever. I'm just putting out a new single every few weeks. Okay, so I have a uh, buddy up here. I don't know if you ever heard of the band Dirty Worms, but they were signed to Strange Music a while back. Uh, they're a hip-hop group that was based out of here in Austin, Texas. And uh, the main guy that yeah. kind of runs the whole group, his name's Smack, Smackola. Uh, he, goes by, he goes by Smack now. Um, he basically does all the Dirty Worms stuff himself now. It's like a three, four member band. Uh, at, when at one point it was like eight members, right? And they were very new metal, uh, DJ, rap, rock, uh, pretty straightforward, pretty, pretty commercial. Uh, you know, again, signed to Strange, Mu Strange Music, played all over the world. Uh, I've been, a, you know, had the privilege of interviewing him a couple of times and working with him in the past. And he has this very particular mindset when it comes to how he does his releases. And I hope I'm not giving away like a formula here, but he's very consistent on the quarter formula, which is, hey, you give him a song and then a month later you drop the video and then a month later you drop the performance or the show that you're going to do to get the people hyped up for it. And then the next quarter you repeat. And he goes, that's how they're consuming now, rather than going out, buying an album, repeating the album, going to the tour, checking you out. You can catch your favorite artists almost any, anywhere nowadays, right? They're at major festivals, they're on tour, tours, you can catch them in your major city if you live near one. Uh, you know, and when it comes to wanting to actually like pick at the artist and get to know them, with the way that they're creating content nowadays, you have to be up on new stuff. You can't just put out an album and expect people to uh, resonate with, with it in a month or two from now, right? You have to constantly be putting out videos, constantly be putting out something. So the fact that you're going that route, it resonates, I think. And I think that's probably something people need to pick up on because you're right, people aren't consuming music the same way and you have to keep people on their toes with that instant gratification. So a new song every two weeks or two songs every month, you're keeping people on them toes. And it also takes pressure off of you, right? Because then you don't have to worry about an album deadline. You don't have to worry about, I mean, yeah, you have to worry about song deadlines. But other than that, you kind of get to move at your own pace as long as you know you're getting a song done when you need to yeah yeah I, I mean an album takes a really long time to accomplish uh no you can half ass it you can have ass it yeah <laughs> yeah no it's it, no it's true though it's uh there's a whole part of the cycle that's been removed indefinitely at this point which is touring and so there's like this this whole new kind of approach toward uh 
strategizing marketing wise that like it's like if you put out an album like all the songs are out are you gonna, are you gonna market singles that everyone's already heard like people people don't have the gratification of the live experience right now we don't know when the next time is that they will so for me aside from the fact that I like to troll one song for a long time what is this face <laughs> <laughs> I lost my ginger ale, and I don't want to be looking like I'm looking for it, but I can't find my ginger ale. Yeah, I'm listening, Casey. Continue. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. There's like the, the industry is changing a lot, and right. if it, if it weren't only for the fact that people were listening mainly to singles and songs and compiling their own playlists nowadays, we have this added problem of there not being that one part of the cycle that we've taken for granted for right. since the beginning of the music industry, which is touring. So right. what is it that uh, investors are concerned with now, right? Like it's, it's, it's actual music. If your if your fans are there because of your music, and you release an album, when if they're expecting another album, they're gonna have to wait at least six, seven, eight months. It takes a long time to do a whole record, you know. Right. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to do one song, and then to like spend twenty days promoting one song. It comes out. Spend ten days promoting it. Then you start promoting the next one. And, and, and in between that time, you're 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 posting content that that engages in the discussion about the the content of the art, which is part of my approach, right? Like, because I can't, I'm not going to perform live or anything, and I'm not even that big of a fan of doing that. Um, I just want to make the art and then have people talking about what uh, the message of the art is trying to prioritize. And so, like that, I mean, that includes videos and stuff as well, maybe behind the scenes making of. But, but there's a huge part of the, of the cycle that's gone. So, like, artists who are, who are expecting to be able to do albums are going to have to be doing them at a much higher frequency or they're going to have to change their plan because, like, you can't promote one album every day for seven months. There's also yeah. nothing worse than dropping a music video for the single you released two months ago, right? Or like following up super late with content that's not fresh or... All those up. bands that dropped an album before the pandemic and then didn't get to tour off it and it tanked. <clears throat> Sorry, it's, the word alive. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of... Dude, a lot of, a bunch a lot of, of bands are suffering from that right now, but... Yeah, it's a crazy that. time when the record label has to, like, start selling records. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, that is pretty funny. Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's coincidental that we talk about the artists or, you know, at least the ones that we're familiar with being like the ones that are in the room on the computer, right? You can have a one man band nowadays. Uh, it's probably a lot easier to produce content now during the pandemic or, you know, during times yeah. like these than it would be if you were in a six person band. So I wonder how many maybe side projects you're going to see stem from this or how many people maybe have been stuck isolated but still being creative and coming up with something that they may yeah. try to foster, you know, somewhere down the line. Yeah, I mean, well, well bands are not going to be able to tour, so right. instead of instead of focusing on that, they're going to have to start focusing on releasing content that teases people for the next music release. Dude, I think I think most of these artists are going to start releasing singles or EPs, little collections of songs instead of these epic, grandiose endeavors that take a year or seven months to to accomplish like if they can't tour they can't all these aspects of promotion are, are gone they're gonna have to start you know releasing more music more consistently and an album is not a viable way of doing that it's just not like what if, they could tour florida that. non-stop <laughs> <laughs> they're florida open florida? they're open yeah right. yeah they're open and so is texas come over here hey in the backstage, we kind of touched on like the digital aspect, right? The digital performances people might be doing over Twitch or Facebook, yeah. what have you. Yeah. Has any of that interested you? Has any of that kind yeah. of put an idea in your head? And if so, what are you thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, um, I think a lot of people have been doing really cool stuff uh, with wielding those platforms. I haven't. It's definitely something I'll, I'll consider doing. Uh, it's not a priority right now, but I think that it's really smart and it's really adaptive and it's really inspiring. I, uh, there's a band I think you guys should check out called 100,000. Heard of them. Yeah, or wait, is it... Doesn't mean I listen to you them. You mean 100 Sons? Maybe. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it has something to do with face. One Hundred Sons is a, is a decent band. I've heard of like that one hundred thousand oh, no. shit. No, no, it's it's. Uh, I think it's. Wait, is it? Yeah, I think it's one hundred thousand. Yeah, one hundred thousand. Yeah, I've heard of that, but I didn't listen to it. Oh, dude, yeah, uh, gent. Yeah, dude. Okay. Oh fuck. <laughs> gent. Oh, fuck yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Actually, that would be really helpful. Yeah, dude, they're really fucking good. It's uh, the singer's amazing. The songs are great. One hundred thousand. They just put out their their third single on. Uh, like on all streaming platforms. Um, anyway, back to your question. Yeah, they've been doing like a lot of bands have been doing this thing where they film each each uh, each band member films themselves performing their part from home. Right. I mean, for me, that's just me, right? But uh, but I, I I would love to do that too. I plan on releasing a lot of uh, video content, production oriented. Maybe maybe I'll do some videos where I sing the songs, you know, live in the studio. Real quick, uh, I know Matt. I know Matt's got another live stream too. Yes, awesome. sir, I know Matt has another question for you. I just want to ask about the music video. What hand did you have in that, if any, or did you actually get somebody to do that for you? Because it's unique. You know, I liked it. It was, it was, it was, it was fun. Wait, what are you talking about? The video for your song "Candle in the Light." It was just like a lyric video, right? Or the little display oh, yeah, you have yeah, on yeah. YouTube. But what, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, you yeah. said that you only work with one other person. But I mean, did you get anybody for that? Did you have a hand in that at all, yeah. creating that? Uh, not really. Uh. I had an idea for the imagery. There was some symbolism that I wanted to use that's brands uh, relevant. Uh, it was a guy named uh, Tony Simone of uh, Zen, Be Zen Beast Media. Can you hear me? Yeah, Zen Beast Media. We got it. Zen Beast yeah, Zen, Media. Yeah, Zen, yeah the, the credits are on if you go and you watch the video on YouTube, which is uh, in the comments. Is, yeah, yeah, but the credit, I list the credits and I cool. list him. He's You can find him on Instagram. He was incredible, dude. He, uh, I, I, I paid him, I think it was like 500 bucks, and we, we talked on the phone for a while about uh, the, the, the message of the song so that he could be inspired. He could figure out what types of imagery uh, to do, and he did it all in CGI, like in a matter of like a week. It was an Ooh, unbelievable, wow. he did an incredible job for like a really good price. And it's a crisp like, video, man. It's, it's up there. It's crisp. Dude, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's a lyric video. Yep. Uh, he he did he also did the 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 video for that band Jaya Gia that I sang for cool. the one that that Mike or I think Lassard from the Contortionist he did that uh, video for them, awesome. and that was like a whole different type of video because I didn't have the budget they had. But um, yeah, he yeah yeah that guy uh, Tony Simone or Simone I don't know how his last name's pronounced, but he was really really fast, unbelievable dude really talented um yeah my only I, my only involvement in that was i gave him uh, some of the symbolism that's uh associated with my brand and cool. told him told him what the song was about told him what not to do uh <laughs> and uh that was which is it. But, which is probably more important than what to do right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the symbolism was really everything uh in that for me um having that like that v symbol and having my name and having the crowd having it look kind of like a like a rally uh that actually was his idea though and i just really liked it yeah i didn't really have many ideas for that it was just symbolism but yeah he did a great job and he did it really fast what yeah, i've so gathered yeah. <laughs> i'm sorry go ahead and i was gonna say yeah yeah you guys said you guys said 10 it looks like it's dinner it's, it's time <laughs> i know yeah i'm gonna wrap this up so what i've gathered from you is that you you've been saying you want people to basically respond to the art you've put out instead of like give a song meeting and be like straightforward with it and i really really fucking dig that what it reminds me of is like they're going to a casey sable art gallery they're standing in front of a picture and they're like huh and you want to stand next to them and be like what does this make you feel what do you think i can really fucking dig that um yeah, is this project yeah, that's, go that's ahead that's the thing no, no, yeah I'll be, I'll be real quick uh for me the thing is with my stuff is that there is a very, very specific message I want to convey uh, to all who will listen, but I, I think the best way to do it, as with all philosophical concepts, I think the best way to get people to realize or understand a new worldview or perspective or idea is to, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Inception, <laughs> you have so to make, good. you have to make them ask the questions 
and then once they start asking the questions, they come to the realization on their own. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm seeking to lead the conversation with questions and engage them on those questions, start the discussion, and dude, I'm like, I'm gonna answer every one of these fucking people that reply to every, anyone who's interested in my stuff, I'm there on social media, it's me doing everything. I haven't, I've, I haven't hired anyone to run my accounts. I, uh, it's true. This is, this is all DIY. Yeah, it's true. And it's really, uh, it's really tough, but, um, for me, it's all about leading the conversation, but engaging with the conversation. And I want to hear what people's answers are to the questions that I'm posing in my music so that I can engage with their answers. Mm. And, uh, the only way that my music will be effective insofar as it's message oriented is that I have the opportunity to engage with them. And so I'm just asking questions that I want to hear their answers to. And unless I get their answers, uh, I don't know how to respond. And that's part of the reason why my marketing, uh, campaign, my, my strategy for releasing music is with singles because I can tailor the songs to, uh, the way they're being received by the audience. Right. So if, if the conversation is going in one direction, one response is relevant, whether or not, or if it's going in a different direction, another response is relevant. And that could be, that could be a different song, you know? So I think, I, th I think that, I think that value in economics comes from the consumer, not from the producer and not from the middleman. So I, yeah, go I'm on. sorry. No, no, I was just gonna say I'm. I you got you got my interest peaked, and I know that we're wrapping this up, but we should probably extend the conversation a little bit in the back because I'm curious as to what you're gonna do when people start responding on those public forums and you start getting a bunch of different messages coming at you, right? And then you've got a couple of different discussions at a time. We don't have to answer that now. I know it's oh gonna wait, be you thought this song meant what? Yeah, and so I. We'll yeah. talk backstage. We'll, 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 we'll Just wait until you bit. play Candle in the Dark while watching Fast and Furious 4, okay? Because I got some serious fan fiction for you, my friend. Um, <laughs> is, the, is this release going to be an EP, going to be a full length? Is it going to be like more of what we heard? Is it going to be different? Can you give us a sneak peek of what the hell we got to look forward to? Yeah. Um, well, there's going to be another song in a few weeks. And uh, what song that is depends on the way the conversation goes with Ooh. the audience. I so like that. It's just really interactive. Again, it's it's all about the consumer, not the middleman, not the producer. Not for me, it ain't. So this is like one of those goosebumps response. books where like you get to pick the ending. It says turn to chapter like seven yep. if you think that blah blah blah. And like yeah, I get to choose like where this goes. So like we really yeah, control like, the Casey like Sable project. This is, dude, this is like that, uh, that last Netflix, uh, the, there was, I think it was an episode of Black Mirror. Yeah. The, you got to, oh, I was going to say Tiger King, but yeah, Bandersnatch. go ahead. No, yeah, 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 episode. yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, to me, it's about the consumer, not the producer, not the middleman. So, so if, and I mean, and you can segue this into telling everybody your social medias, right? Cause we want to promote yeah. you and, and get your stuff out there. But if, yeah. uh, they're going to have this discussion, right. To your music and to what you're writing, where's the best, uh, form or formats to do this and uh yeah. where else can they find your stuff at man instagram casey.sable uh okay. but i really really insist that if you want to hear the music you go to spotify uh just search my name it's right there yeah and you guys can you guys can put a link or whatever just go to my profile hit the the share button and then post that link and um, we share cool. the shit out of well. some Casey Sable music. And then please, if somebody man, wanted please. to speak to you about the music or have one of those discussions yeah. with you, where's the best way? Instagram? Yeah, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, Facebook cool. is a better form for longer form discussions. I agree. Uh, I agree. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just because it's, uh, I don't know why, actually. I don't have a good answer for why that is. Because the Instagram's, is, Instagram's photos click and you just go, you, go, you just want to see shit and you keep going. Facebook. And Twitter is where you have a mental breakdown, which I don't think yeah, you're going to yeah, have yeah. anytime soon. Yeah, Facebook. No, the, yeah, the problem, the problem with the discussions I seek to have with the audience is that uh, they require answers that it could be really long for some people. Yes, so. exactly. And nobody's like got the patience for it. Some people might have a lot to say and they don't, there's not a form for that on Twitter. So I, I don't like that form of discussion. I'd rather they engage with me on on my personal Facebook account, I second uh, that. On my artist Facebook account, or yep. on my Instagram. My Instagram is the one I'm kind of focused on now. I'm really focused on trying to uh, drive traffic to my Spotify because I really want to get on those Spotify playlists. 
you may want to. I actually just got on one today. So. All right, so, which I one? Gotta add which Casey one? to our Spotify playlist. It was it was the it was the R it was the forward slash R forward slash listen to this all one word. Oh, the Reddit, the subreddit. Yeah, the subreddit. Yeah. Listen to this. So somebody yeah, threw yeah. you up on the sub. Dope. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it's really I'm, cool. There's a lot I'm of adding you to ours right, right I'm now. I'm on. I'm on Reddit too. You so just, I'll try. Yeah, I post on Reddit. So yeah, you could just if, if you go to Spotify, just search listen to this all one word. Hey, you might want to fucking buy some ad space on those fucking NASCARs going outside your window too. That might be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> get some fucking ad space up on the sides of those bitches. And next time, next time, <laughs> I'll go up and down. To tame that that uh that extracurricular activity. Uh, it just okay. makes me miss Hollywood even more, man. Uh, okay, um, I can't Hollywood. wait to. That's the exact opposite effect on me. Because <laughs> <laughs> you live there, homie. Yeah, terrific. I have officially liked you on Spotify, and I'm going to add oh, your yeah. Jesus-like picture to our Spotify playlist that is filled with other bands you probably don't listen to and some K-pop. <laughs> oh, dude, I love me some K-pop, though. There's a sick K-pop band that just played outside, uh, like right outside my building at the venue that's right outside my building that's outdoors. Do you happen to know Ooh. that even? <laughs> I forget. It was some boy bands, though. It was like some that's, that's all of them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Day 6, BTS. It could be fucking anyone. Uh, yeah, Casey, sure. I am super stoked you were on our show, dude. Uh, Thank you, you definitely, so much for having me. Thank you so much for having me. You brought the artist touch to this show. You uh, you schooled us in metal. You taught us about Gent. You turned us on to a shit ton of new bands. And all the bedroom producers that were watching for the entire live stream are super motivated right now. So thank you, my friend. Dude, everyone, please engage with me. Uh, just talk to me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm really easy to... Uh, to bait into conversation he oh, is yeah, look at me oh yeah man that's awesome thank you for doing this again it was a pleasure you're phenomenal thank you for anytime having anytime guys. you drop something send it our way we'll blast it out for you we'll share it we'll promote it do you have a release date for the next one i don't not yet not yet cool. so we, they I, need to do... stay tuned af everyone yeah, just needs to f everyone just needs to follow me on instagram and facebook and spotify and they will all see all my posts i'm 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 paying for them to get all promoted so everyone that follows me and a lot of people who don't are going to see it too. So, yep. yeah. Everyone just follow me. Just follow me if you give a shit.